Fun story. Back when I was a wee lad of, it was either 16 or 17, I, <laughs> this is what I hate about live. No, I'm kidding, I love live. You guys are great, thanks for tuning in. Fun story, when I was a wee lad of 16, I think it was actually 17, when I built my first computer, we did not have YouTube yet. So you couldn't just go on youtube.com, how to build a computer and follow along with a guide like you guys can do now. So the way that I actually learned to build a PC was by having a friend who I, it, it's really a miracle that he did anything nice for me at all because I mocked him mercilessly on this trip that we went on together, which is actually where I met him. Uh, when he told me about what a LAN party was for the first time, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. Like, I'm sorry, you bring your computers where? And you, this was your birthday party? Wow, dude, you're lame. Um, anyway, uh, so I had a friend of mine actually help me spec out my first gaming computer and build it for me. I watched him do it while he made fun of me for choosing such poor people parts because I was going AMD. And at the time, the Pentium 4C Northwood core was the ruler of the roost. And then I took it home, and instead of doing what you might think you would do with a brand new computer that someone just built for you, install some games on it and play them, I decided to take it apart and rebuild it and see if it would still work. Fortunately, it did, and that was sort of the beginning of, uh, of this hobby for me, really. So I went from, okay, now I know how to build this computer to now I wanna build different computers to, okay, now I wanna cable manage them and put cool you know, lighting effects in them and upgrade them and all that, all that, kind, of, all that kind of cool stuff. It's f fun, funny, funny story, by the way. By the time I had the money to substantially upgrade that machine, so I went with a Barton uh, Athlon XP 2500 plus, I overclocked that thing to 2.2 or 2.3 gigahertz or so. Um, by the time I was ready to significantly upgrade it, AMD was the one that was for, for the rich kids with the Athlon 64. So there you go, take that, take that, Kyle. All right, let's go ahead and open this puppy up. So what I'm doing today is pretty much what I did way back when I disassembled and reassembled that machine that, ah, uh, there we go, that Kyle built for me with, uh, well, a small twist, well, a couple of small twists. So one is that this is my computer that I built. No one actually built it for me. Hashtag lying us. Is it true or is it not? Uh, and number two, is that I'm going to be making some changes to it as I go. So there's one thing about this machine that has driven me absolutely bonkers ever since I built it, which was like four years ago or something like that at this point. The power button at the front, okay. I actually broke it while I was assembling it. And so my power button is the one on the bottom and the one on the top, which is supposed to be the power button is not hooked up at all. So I don't have a reset switch and my power button is in the wrong spot. It drives me absolutely crazy. So I'm going to be fixing that today along with, heaven help us all, um, hopefully upgrading to hardline tubing because that was the other big compromise that I made when I was putting this machine together. Other than that, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sick rig. So we're going hardline and we are fixing this uh, this issue with the power button up here. Oh, I see the problem here. Apparently, you have got to be kidding me. Uh, is it? Wait a minute. Yeah, we're, we're good, right? Oh yeah, we're good. Okay, good stuff. Let me just check something. Yes, okay, we good. Cool. All right, so, oh man, where to start with something like this? Step one is probably to drain the machine, I would think. Oh, I need a bucket. Theoretically, I have everything that I need to complete my tasks today here with me, but we're gonna see how that actually works out. I am, <laughs> I'm honestly not that hopeful. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong here. Okay. And funny story, I don't necessarily remember 
Man, this thing's heavy. It's all steel. I don't necessarily remember exactly why the front power button is broken. Like, I don't know what the exact problem is. So it's gonna be kind of hard for me to, uh, to know if I'm gonna be able to fix it until I actually just get in there. Oh, you know what? No, there's a better way to drain this. Okay, I was just gonna uh, crack one of these fittings uh, with it over a bucket, but uh, we thought of this actually when we designed this machine. So check this out, uh, right there. So under that rail, there's actually external access to the top of the reservoir here. So I'm gonna start with that, I guess. Just gotta pop the mounting rail. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years why my personal rig is a rack mount machine. And, well, the honest answer is partly just because as far as I was aware, no one had really done it before and I thought it was, I thought it'd be pretty cool, like obviously, you know, a server form factor, like, a, you know, a 4U rack mount case is gonna be, you know, pretty good for cooling and fitting lots of good hardware in it. So I was like, yeah, sure, you know, why couldn't you do a rack mount gaming rig? I got all your cooling at the front, so I've actually got two stacked triple 120 millimeter radiators up here, which, as we recently demonstrated on yesterday's video, actually, is fine and a perfectly legitimate way, even if it's not the most optimal way to install two radiators. Um, and the other one was because I wanted to move my gaming rig out of the room where I do my gaming so that ev I wouldn't even have to listen to any of the water-cooled noise. Uh, Gilman says, raise your hand if you remember when Personal Rig Update 2015 concluded in 2016. I remember that. Thank you, Gilman, over on Floatplane. Appreciate you. I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to acknowledge that on this stream, but yes, this, this rig did take a long time to complete just because there was the process of designing, uh, getting the case fabricated, um, actually building it, and it just all kind of stretched out. We didn't have nearly as many people on staff back then as we do now, so it was hard to get these kind of longer term projects done. Oh wow, this is pretty exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Um, whew, I really do not want this to fall, that would be very inconvenient for the stream today. All right, first stream of the stream. Here we go. See a water. You know, um, is this the best way to do this? I mean, it seems to be working. Ooh, definitely a little bit of it's going in the case. Let's tip that. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, that's working. Um, my leg is wet. Why is my leg wet? Uh, okay. Yeah, this is fine. Definitely looks like I peed myself, but other than that, this is fine. A Little bit of water made it onto the laptop keyboard, but should still be fine. So you can see, uh, yeah, okay, so there's a little bit of wetness right there. So what happened was, like it's not like it's, it's not like it's sealed against the case there. Um, so some of it kind of dripped onto these cables down here and then down this side. But as far as I can tell, none of it got on the motherboard itself. And it's going to be a couple hours before I actually power up that motherboard anyway. So theoretically, we should be okay. Great fill port, not a great drain port. Yeah, pretty much. Like I should be able to fill this really quickly later, but mm -mm, yeah, no, it was not, it was not the best for, for that. Um, all right, now what? I might still end up having to take the YOLO approach of just like yanking a fitting off of it, to be quite honest with you guys. Uh, let's go with this one, I suppose. Oh man. F for the motherboard, no guys. There's no F for the motherboard, it's all good. Okay, okay, so that's, that's, that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's, try and, let's try and blow some of the water out. This is a classic, classic Linus Tech Tips move. 
not something I would actually recommend because you can get uh, like microbes in your loop, but as long as you put some antimicrobial junk, like some iodine or whatever, you should be okay. Oh boy, that's tough. One sec. Oh man, that's a lot of water. Two triple 120 millirads. CPU block, well, full cover, motherboard block, GPU block, and I mean, I guess the reservoir was empty, but dang. Actually, I'm gonna give it one more for good measure here. Hold on a second. So I'm just plugging this fitting right here so that it, so the air doesn't come out there and it just uh, blows water out here. Actually, you know what we should do is go the other way too, just to uh, just to see. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I think we're clear, or as clear as we're gonna get, anyway. All right. Oh, you heavy, heavy thing. All right. This is where the risk of leaking on the motherboard really comes in. We got that tube hanging around there. Dangling over it out. Okay. Ah, stop fitting. Oh shoot, I'm on my wireless antenna. Okay, we're gonna we're just gonna ask the wireless antenna. There we go. Cool. Good stuff. Good times. All right. So now, what are we looking at here? Is there still? Yeah, there's still a little bit of water in the bottom of the reservoir. See a little bit pooled in the uh, full cover block. Um, but what we can do now is we can remove the bulk of the, uh, oh, this stupid thing is doing this again. There we go. But what we can do is remove the bulk of the sensitive components before going any further. That way we're very unlikely to actually wreck something. Okay. So we'll start with the graphics card. This is uh, an RTX Titan. So this is the thing we want to destroy the least out of everything that's in here. Oh man, these fittings are seized. You gotta be kidding me. I was hoping not to run into big problems until much later in the stream. There we go. Okay, no, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. These are really cool fittings. I actually don't know if they make these anymore. These are uh, Bits Power True Silver and they pretty much make it so that you don't have to have an antimicrobial agent because your fittings um, have silver on them. Like actually they're, they're plated with actual silver. So that acts, those silver ions in the loop act as an antimicrobial. Mm. Mm. From my experience, they do seem to work quite well, but something that I is sort of raising some questions for me is the fact that this is black. Don't really get that. Um, that does, that does seem to kind of be a concern. Um, especially because if you look, the water is still clear. Like that is, that is crystal clear, still good water. And yet it seems to be unique to the CPU block too. It's like black in there. People are saying silver does tarnish. Yes, yeah, silver does tarnish, but that wouldn't affect um, the CPU block. See that? So I don't know, I don't know what's up with that because that's not made of silver. That's something else entirely. All right, let's get this, uh, let's get this RTX Titan out of here. Safe and sound. Look at that. Got that RGB that's not even hooked up. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing I'm hoping to improve. I'm gonna improve my RGB game. And just gotta, oh, there we go. I'm just gonna put that there so I can drain these components. Just gotta kind of play around with them a little bit. Oh, okay, that's interesting. 
There's some... Oh, actually, no, that looks more normal. So this is more like what I would expect. This is just, you know, part of the curse of using nickel-plated blocks is when you've got these fine fin arrangements, you can actually see, see that copper color that's coming through? It's kind of hard to see, but see that copper color that's coming through? So that's some erosion, not to be confused with corrosion, just from the water uh, rushing over it um, and exposing the copper. Now, this one looks black like that one to that crappy Logitech webcam, but actually I can see quite a bit of copper color over the fin stack on this one. Um, and it looks like the black is sort of that layer in between the exposed copper and the nickel. So this one I'm really not worried about. It's that motherboard block that I want to take a closer look at. It's what I, it's what I hate about water cooling, man. It's like, it looks beautiful for like, you know, two weeks after you first install it. And then you're, I mean, you're basically filling your system with the thing that creates literal actual rivers, you know, just water rushing across surfaces destroys them. That's what it does. All right, so we can get these tubes out of here. As, as soon as I've got the motherboard removed, I'm really not that worried that anything's gonna go too wrong. Oh, this is something that I should probably pull out of here too. All there we go. So there's my uh, boot SSD that I've been using these days. Seems fine. Okay, front USB ports. Get that disconnected. Get you guys a better look at what's going on here. Oops, I'm gonna need a different screwdriver bit. And I am ready for a screwdriver upgrade. And I can't, I can't say anything, but um, I can say, man, I am ready for a screwdriver upgrade. One that doesn't have all the bits just like thrown into the top of it like this uh, snap-on one that I've been using for the last 15 years. All right, there we go. Okay. Uh, Kiefer 5, what happened to the Ubiquity equipment in your rack? Uh, do you mean what happened to the Ubiquity equipment that I am planning to put in my rack? because that I have not actually put in the rack yet. I've got a garage full of Ubiquity equipment right now, and uh, it's gonna be a security system upgrade as well as a Wi-Fi upgrade by the time I'm done with it, but I haven't put any of it in there. In the, in the organizing my rack video, uh, I believe all I said was I'm leaving these spots blank for the Ubiquity equipment that I am planning to put into it. So that is not, not completed yet. Uh, B. Stevens 23 on Floatplane says, the bucket scares me. The bucket scares me too. I'm getting this motherboard out of here as fast as I can, okay? It will be out V soon, V, V soon, okay? All right, there we go. Motherboard's out. We are now at pretty low risk of anything catastrophic happening with water. Let's just drain some of that water out of the board. There we go. All right, all right, all right. All right, uh, I gotta find somewhere safe to put that. That seems good. Don't worry, that sound, that sound sounded a lot worse than it was. That was just the like kind of plastic lid that I plunked it on top of. It's all good, it's all good. All right, put that over on the kids' play kitchen over there. Feels a little weird putting an RTX Titan on, a, on an element, <laughs> like a stovetop element. It's not a real one though, so it's all good. Oh, you know, something else I should fix today. Um, I had a lot of people ask me for the plans, like for the drawings of this case, because they wanted to do something similar for themselves. And the reason I never released them was not because I'm just like, you know, you know I hate collaboration and, and sharing. Uh, it was because it just wasn't good enough. I wasn't happy with it uh, completely. So see this? Those lines for the power, or the lines, those holes for the power supply don't actually line up. So something that I could do today is maybe expand, open up this hole a little bit, so that I can actually screw in the bottom of the power supply. It's really annoying. Every time I go to plug in the power connector, it like it wrenches on it like that. It's not too good. So that's something that I would love to, that's something that I'd love to fix today. What happens if you drink PC water? This is what happens when I go to the YouTube chat instead of the float plane chat. You guys are asking the best questions. 
All right, well, if we're going to be doing any sort of widening of things on the case that'll involve uh, drilling, I'm definitely going to get this power supply out of here. The last thing you want is some metal filings or metal, metal shards in your computer power supply. That's going to be a super duper bad time. Nice Norwegian look says, is no good 63 over on float plane. Thank you. I don't know that I was going for the uh, Norwegian look. This was supposed to just be like, you know, COVID beard. Um, and then it's gone on sort of a lot longer than I really thought about. Like I'm kind of, it's kind of, it's getting less itchy, but I still find it kind of itchy and I'm a little ready to, I'm a little ready to get rid of it at this point, but we'll see, we'll see. A lot of people have expressed um, interest in me keeping it, so. Static sound again. Uh, that's weird. Um, it's back apparently. That's really weird. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I was using this just yesterday. I didn't you might be observing a USB buffer overflow. Can you try a different hub? Great suggestion. What I'm going to do is, uh, all right. Uh, thanks, Nick. Bye. All right. Well, that's what I get for trying to do it, you know, like properly. And, oh shoot, oof. So I'm tempted to swap out to my, my trusty dongle here, but I'm a little bit worried that when I do that, um, I'm gonna lose my network connection outright and the stream is going to end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable my Wi-Fi and I'm going to hope. See, I'm using a new uh, dongle today. It's actually, I, I thought I was upgrading. I thought I was doing a good thing. I moved to uh, like thunder, a Thunderbolt dongle. You know, I'm gonna have all that bandwidth. Um, I'm gonna lose my network connection outright. Shh, stop. Um, so, all right. Uh, uh, should, I, should I change the dongle or should I just stick with it? Floatplane chat says just leave it. Chronified says, move to a different USB port. You're overloading the USB chipset on that side. I only have gigabit LAN and this capture card running off of it. I, I really don't think that's the issue. It's a Thunderbolt hub, not a USB hub even. We got 40 gigabit. Okay, you know what? We're continuing. I'm gonna have to, I am gonna have to cut so much crap out of the YouTube vlog for this thing. Thank you all for your patience. So stressed out right now. Ah. Okay, let me just get all my chats going here. Oh my goodness, there's like 20,000 of you watching right now while I'm like breaking stuff. All right, cool. So we're back to the overhead cam. Let's go ahead and get this reservoir ripped out of here. The mount for this is actually pretty clever. This is one of the things that I really liked about this design. Really simple, and I don't know why more cases don't do something like this. So we created this reservoir mounting plate that's super generic. You could mount any reservoir in the world to it pretty much, although we did design the case specifically around this one for, with that fill port and stuff. Um, and then basically you just got this plate here that it mounts to. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tilt this up and I'm gonna cover this so I can give you guys a better look at that. So check this out. So we've cable managed the D5 pump, uh, the, the default cable that's kind of long. I, I could have just sleeved it, I guess, but this had it completely out of the way there. And, uh, and yeah, so it's just like this metal plate that you, it's got a couple of slots on it so you can mount the res wherever you want and it just goes in like that. Super easy to put in and take out. <laughs> Alden says the <laughs> the fan is off. Thank you. Thank you, Alden. You know what? Alden from Floatplane Chat, 
I needed that right now. I needed the humor. All right, let's get this bucket out of here. <laughs> this is like, it's, it's exactly the kind of, you know, day I'm having so far here where I would, I would, you know, dump a, dump a bucket onto my, onto my personal rig. And at this point, there's no valuable hardware in it or anything. It would just be a royal pain in the butt to deal with. Let's pull these uh, screws out of here. Oh, man. Whatever, you guys, you guys know you love to watch me suffer. Uh, here's another little clever thing about this design. To get access to the radiators, there's just this top brace here. There we go. Four screws gets that out. There we go. And now we've got access to the fan filter. Well, actually, okay, I could have taken that out before. But that's the fan filter and the radiator. Now, oh, okay, I've got to pull this other rail off. That was one thing that we did not plan for. I'll get you guys a good look at this after with the, with the webcam view. There we go. None of these are ferrous screws, so they all just kind of fall off as soon as I take them out. Here we go. Switch to the webcam. All right, here we go. So there's a, oh wait, yeah. This mount, see, was supposed to be screwed in, but didn't line up properly. So I think this radiator ended up only mounted, see, it was supposed to be these screws right here and here. Uh, yeah, these two here and here, yeah. So I think the way this actually ended up being mounted was just from the bottom. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna tilt it up like this because those radiators probably do still have a significant amount of water in them. Oh, okay, tilt it up like that. And then, wait. Uh, okay, how is that screwed in? Okay, we'll, we'll go over there for now. Wait a minute, what? How the devil, is this just sitting in here or what? There's gotta be some, I'm sure of it. There's gotta be some like clever way that it's mounted. Uh, huh. <laughs> oh boy. If I am not able to remove the radiators, I am not going to be able to fix my power switch. I must remove the radiators. How are they mounted? Oh no. Someone watched that video recently? Like, do you remember how the radiators are mounted? It's really solid. Like, it feels like, it feels like it's mounted to those side plate pieces, but they're, they're not attached to anything. It must be screwed in from the, from the top then. But then how did I get the screws in the top here? It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, ladies and gentlemen. Linus Smart High Tech Solution is hot glue. Um, no, there's there's no way that I like hot glued or double sided taped it in. I don't think that's right. Oh, I did. I see. Uh, okay, so that's what I did when the mounting holes didn't line up. Okay. Oh, man. All right, well, that's a drag. Uh, I guess I'm going to be retaping that back in because I don't really have the best tools for putting a proper countersunk mount in. In the meantime, we can remove the radiator mounting screws from the front one here. Oh, that is so lame. Wow, I really, I really cut a lot of corners on this rig, didn't I? I didn't even remember cutting these corners. You know, the funny thing is, I probably thought that I was only gonna run this for a short period of time because I, in the past, had made upgrades to my personal rig pretty often. Like, I called it Personal Rig Update 2015 because, like, the idea was I was gonna 
do something, you know, kind of on a yearly basis or so. And then I've ended up using this for, well, the next four plus years with only very small changes. This is a lot of screws. This is why I usually only put half the screws in radiators. But the problem with that here is that there's an aesthetic element to it because you can see all these screws from the front. Oh man, the ratchet mechanism on this screwdriver is broken, which is really not making things go faster right now. I should just go get my drill. This is taking forever. That's what I hate. Jobs that, are, that take just long enough that it's not worth it to go get a power tool. I am gonna have to put them back in later though. I probably could have justified it. But then now I've only got two screws left. Feels like it'd be better to just get her done here. I'm kind of afraid of how dusty these radiators are gonna be. I can see the back one. The back one looks okay, but the front one is gonna be the one to take the brunt of the dust coming into the, well, the front of the case. That's kind of where it comes in. All right, let's have a look here. Yeah, they, re they really were. They really were double-sided taped in as far as I can tell here. Let's just have a, a look here. Um, is that just another piece of tape that I didn't get loose last time? Let's see. All right. Oh man, whatever that tape is, is like pretty baller. So that's cool, I guess. This is a, ooh, hey ho, we got some water here. Uh, that's fine, we can deal with that later. Here, we just, why don't you go out there? That way if you're gonna leak water, you do it somewhere else. Oh, there's power cords down there. Nope, nope, not there. How about in the case? In the case is good. <laughs> Come on out, baby. You got this, I believe in you. I don't wanna break anything. I do not have extra parts on hand to account for, for breakage today. When I'm doing this kind of stuff at the office, it's a little bit less worrisome. I mean, obviously I don't wanna break parts, but you know, my job is to make videos, not computers, so. You know, for desperate, we can replace a, a broken part to make the video. Uh, why is this not coming off? Um, do I just have to pull harder? Now I'm afraid that I've broken whatever's over on that other side there. Okay, that is clearly loose. What are you stuck on? Just like one stubborn bit of tape here or what? All right. Uh, hold on. It feels like there's like a catch, you know? I think there is. I think I remember this. There we go. Oh, there it is. That's it. That's the cooling unit. Okay. That is freaking dirty. Oh boy. That is nasty. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Got all my chats back. Oh, oh boy, let's get that. Oh, that is four and a half, five years almost of cat hair, dust. The thing you guys gotta remember is my, my server closet here at home actually pulls in air from outside. So you'll find the occasional dead bug in the machines. I do have a filter on it, but for the first, I don't know, at least six months, I did not have a filter on it. I am gonna need a vacuum cleaner. Dang. Um, hmm, okay. Okay. Uh, we're gonna... We're gonna vacuum this radiator because that is freaking nasty. 
You know what? The second one doesn't look that bad though. Here, let's try and get a let's try and get a look at that one. Like that looks that looks reasonably clean in there. Like even this fan isn't dirty. So it seems like the front one really did take the brunt of it. It's kind of hard to see in there perfectly. Ah, thanks, kiddo. We got a helper here, bringing me that uh, bringing me that Dyson. Uh, just hand it to me. Thank you. All right. Oh, he's back to back to homeschooling now. Okay. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'll try and get you guys a, a look at what's going on here. Um, I'm gonna try and actually drain these a little bit more first before we do this. Oh boy. Okay, my bucket's back. We got the tabs in the bucket, okay, here we go. Okay. And one, two, three, hip. Oh, no, 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 no. Get back in there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's a lot of water that was still in there. It's a good thing we're doing this. Ah. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this right angle fitting here. Um, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Oh, no, no, I'm good. My aunt's like, you look like you need help. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> really though, really though, everything, everything that's happening right now is completely fine. Um, and this is all entirely under control right now in this time. <laughs> okay, all right, we good. Uh, I think, come on, ah. any more in there? Okay, I think we're good. Let's vacuum that radiator, oh gross. Get that water out of there. That's definitely dirtier water. Whatever's kind of settled in the in the radiator. They tend to be the dirtiest part of any loop anyway. Uh, it's even brand new. All right, here we go. We're going max. All right, there. That's, uh, that's Dyson power for you. You know what? I might need more than Dyson power. Um... Okay, we're bringing in the uh, we're bringing in the big guns here, guys. We need more vacuum power. In the meantime, I got to figure out what my plan is for getting this radiator back in here. I can tell you guys one thing for sure: those hardline fittings and tubes in there, those are not coming out. Hey, thank you. All right, awesome. That's fine. That's far enough. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ah, there we go. That's what we need. Uh, the outlet for this is actually behind this play kitchen, so I need a, a second here. There we go. All right, it's about to get loud. Okay, new strat. I actually have a built-in vac that's like however many horsepower so obviously it's a little more powerful than a battery operated vacuum, no matter how spectacular that battery operated vacuum is. Um, we used the Dyson, which I actually bought after doing the sponsored video. That one stayed at the office and I actually bought one. So we use that for like, you know, when the kids spill at a meal or whatever else. And then we use this when it's like vacuuming business time, you know? Okay, I don't want to bend any of these fins. Trying to be careful here. I'm not going for perfection. I'm just trying to get it degrossified here.
Remember guys, never use a vacuum like this to clean uh, static sensitive computer components. This is a radiator, so it does not matter. But the static charge that can build up because of the air rushing over the metal, you can actually see it in effect if you try to vacuum something small like rice you'll see some of them won't actually go in the vacuum. They'll get flung around because the difference in charge between the end of the vacuum here and the piece of rice is so much that it'll come close and then get repelled away. All right, that is a lot better, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's have a look at that other rad here. I don't know if we're doing anything with it. At least get some dust off there. Yeah, all right. I don't know, guys. Should I do it? Should I take out those fittings? I super duper don't want to, but I won't be able to clean that radiator if I don't. All right, let's do it. I have no idea how long I'm going to be streaming for today at this rate, though. All right. <sighs> I'm doing it. Taking out, taking out these tubes. All right, it's off. There it is. So this side you can see is like perfect because obviously the intake side is where they get wet. Just wipe that off. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, now that it's vacuumed anyway. Okay. So that's good. Ah, this is more like a classic, classic Linus build. Got only half of the, oh, there's my screwdriver. Got only half of the screws in. Oh yeah, this was another small design flaw. Check this out, guys. So there were just, there were so many of these little things that I just wasn't comfortable releasing the design files because people were gonna discover how dumb we were. So see this screw? You can't, you can't screw that in because this flange here covers it. So um, you don't actually have a choice. You have to leave out some of the fan screws. <laughs> Excuse me. Like if I were to go back and, and fix all the little problems with it, sure. But I'm not going to do that, so... Yeah, we're never releasing these files. <clears throat> Oliver G says, I bet he won't finish this stream till 2021. No, 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 no. I have budgeted the rest of the day, but there's no way it's gonna take me longer than that to tear down and rebuild this machine. Even with hardline tubing, I hope. It's a plastic table, not a wooden table, so I don't know if it works quite the same way for your knock on wood there, but I'm legitimately not that worried about it. Okay. Wow. Well, that one's not bad at all. Dang, that was a total waste of time and effort. I didn't have to do that at all. Well, since we're in here, we might as well give it the old vacuum, but I don't think it's gonna do much. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All good. <clears throat> Part of it is that that second one actually has this filter in front of it as well. So uh, the reason that I didn't go with a filter on the front one was just for aesthetics so that we could see the LTT edition Noctua fans that were um, something that we were super excited about at that time. So those are in there. <clears throat> actually, those fans could probably use a quick, a quick tidy up. Uh, yeah, what's the best way to do that? These aren't industrial PPCs, so I can't just like, you know, scrub them in water. 
Um, ah, I think I know what to do. This is, uh, this is how I usually like to clean fans. I don't know why I didn't think of it immediately. BRB, and this is something my kids can't get me. They don't know where it is. Because why would my kids know where cleaning supplies are? There we go. All right. It's about to get a little grody up in here, but this is one of my favorite, favorite fan dusting tools. You just get in there in the back of the fan and kind of, you know, move the blades around a little bit so you get at all of them. Give the old blowy blow. People who like canned air. No, you won't do this good of a job with canned air. It just doesn't work that well. There you go. Basically perfect. Now, if you have like a sticky kind of dust, like if you're a smoker, for example, this isn't going to work very well. But if it's all just like a very dry dust, you can do a pretty quick and pretty good job just with a little feather duster. You got to move around the blades to kind of get into the spots right at the right near the hub. But yeah, this does a shockingly good job. It's like, yeah, old classic technology. There's a reason they used, you know, feather dusters to dust stuff, right? All right. So we can go ahead and pop that one back in there. People are like, I need one. Oh man, see, we should have been ready. We should have been ready with an LTTstore.com uh, feather duster before we started this, eh? <laughs> right. And, and counterintuitively, don't get it wet. That's bad. That will take much, much longer. You want the dust nice and dry. These Noctua fans are even more difficult than most to clean just because they have those kind of air channeling blades on them. Turn that around, get into all the little groovy grooves. There we go. Nice. Man, this rig's going to look like new. I'm excited. Hey, stop it. Sorry, fan keeps Falling over here. Cut it out. There we go. Oh, I should probably do some Q&A. Zapman says, LTT PC cleaning kit might actually sell. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Actually, it would just be a matter of finding a good, reputable supplier, good quality, good consistency, good conditions in the factory. Um, Finding one that's not busy making face masks right now because of all the COVID stuff. Like it's, there's more to it than just like, hey, that's a good idea. We've got, we've got lots of good ideas for stuff that would sell like Billio in LTT store. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting all of those ducks in a row. Running LTT store, had, or well, Nick running LTT store, really, I don't do that much of the actual like um, fine details. But running LTT store has given... I think all of us, a much better appreciation for how difficult it is to bring any product to market, much less a good one. Uh, all right, cool. So that's done. There is a lot of water in the bottom of this case now, and that's definitely something that I'm going to need to wipe up. That's one thing I should have absolutely been ready with before I started because there was no way I was going to get all the way through this. Ow. Oh, just nailed my foot on the tripod. Ow. There was no way I was going to get through this whole thing without spilling at least a little bit of water. Okay. Rent. Wipe that up. Have a look at what I did last time for cable management. I don't want to really reinvent the wheel here, so I'm probably going to cable manage it pretty much the same way. But this is actually good. This is... Uh, we can give the rest of the chassis the old, the old wipey wipe. Oh, the shiny shine. Oh man, 
Huh, I keep saying, oh yeah, one more thing that I that I forgot to have in place before we started, and then I immediately find another one that I should have had. I'm gonna need a soldering iron because that power button is gonna need to be soldered in order to fix it. Okay, fantastic. What are these nuts doing here? Oh, that's how the mounting mechanism works. Oh, that's actually kind of clever. Um, there's these little nuts on here that you don't put down all the way. I guess I had intended for them to be hot glued or like Loctited or something. And then it actually slides onto it. And then the reason that didn't work was because there are two rads, one of which needs to be uh, screwed into the front. And they needed to be connected ahead of time. I remember that whole thing. It was a nightmare getting it in there. I hope I can get it in again. <sighs> Wish I had thought of that. Oh, where's the Dyson? Got a bug in there that I want to get out. I would rather not have bug guts all over my cloth if I don't have to. Seriously? That thing is stuck in there. Come on. There you go. You're done. You're out. Ow. That's, that's nasty. Sweet. All right, ground zero, here we go. Time to start fixing things. What do we want to start with? Guys, hit me up here. I guess fixing the power button, actually. Let's get that power button fixed. So I'll give you guys a look at what went wrong. I think it was actually the reason I couldn't fix it at the time was because I had already gotten the radiator in and I think what happened was it like knocked one of these connectors off here, see? So it stopped working. Oh uh, yeah, this one here, right there. So it knocked that off. I might not actually not have to solder anything at all. And it had been such a pain in the butt to get the radiator in that I had determined that it just was not worth fixing. Oh, when I kicked the tripod, the camera got all crooked. <laughs> Take it! <laughs> Fixy fixed. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully that's a little better for you guys there. Really does raise the question why I thought it would be a good idea now if 2015 or 2016 or whenever it was me decided that it was not in fact worth it. But hey, if I can't remember that it was a problem, then it's not a problem. Um, hmm. Let's see. And Mosseri over on Floatplane says, we need LTT store mouse mats. We saw some in the mechanical switch test video. I know, we're working on it. That has to do with making sure we found exactly the right supplier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorient the power button a little bit so that as the radiator goes in, it's less likely to interfere with any of these leads. Wow, this lead is actually twisted 180 degrees. That seems like it could have been problematic. You know, I don't even know if this switch is gonna work even if I do wire it back up. You see that? I don't know, if, I don't know how well you guys can, uh, oh, come on. There we go. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that, that lead is actually twisted right there. It still seems to be making contact, all right. Hmm. Well, oh, wait a second. This is snapped off. Oh, no. It didn't just come off, it snapped off. The pin is in here. Oh, that's really bad. 
I don't have a new switch on hand. I thought I didn't, re oh no, I didn't remember right. I thought it was just disconnected. Oh no. Well, what, hold on a second. What, what, what pin is that? Ground, wait, G1. Is that just a ground? Ooh, okay. Well, let me think for a second here. Wait a minute, those pins are twisted on the other ones too. Okay, that maybe that's supposed to be like that. That's super weird. Okay, hold on a second. There might be hope here. Okay, so first I'm gonna start by repositioning the reset switch just a little bit so that it's less likely to interfere with the radiators as well. Last thing I wanna do is break the reset switch and have to go order a new one or pilfer one from Yvonne's computer or something. Okay, so reset switch. That's fixed up. Now, let me have a look here. NC1. Um, it's really hard to read those like this. So these are combination power switch and LED. So that says five volt, I guess. And then that puppy says, oh wait. No, that just says nine amp something, 20, 20, 20 something AW. Okay, so that's just the um, wiring spec. Does that say, oh no, it says six volt, I guess. Uh, oh, okay. So what are, wait, what are these labels then? I don't get it. So positive. Yeah, they're not labeled. Positive, negative, and then the power. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So positive, negative, and power switch. Mm, they're labeled on the underside. There we go. So I think it's possible that if I hook up to that other pin that is not broken off, that it will fix it. But another option, no, I don't know if, uh, I actually don't know if soldering it is another option here. Oh, what a bummer. I am, uh, I'm bummed, guys. I'm bummed. I thought this was gonna be no problem at all. I'm gonna pop it out, take a closer look at it. It's kinda tricky to get out here, so. There we go, all right, here we go. All right, so that says NC1. Now that suggests to me that that means no connection. And from the labels that are on here already, so this probably would have been done by protocase. From the labels that are on here already, what it looks like is that these outer ones, see positive and negative, so those are for the LED. That makes sense because those ones are still connected and the LED still works. So the power LED works. Um, then we've got uh, N01 here, and then we've got C1. C1 is the one that's broken off right there. And then we've also got uh, NC1. Are you guys familiar with, um, are you guys familiar with these buttons? Because I'm not super well versed in them. NC is normally closed. Okay, so that doesn't mean um, no connection, okay. Switch the connections with the reset switch. Yeah, I could do that. I could just move the switches and then my power switch would work and I wouldn't have a reset switch. That is my back plan. But if you guys are familiar with these, it would be great. Oh, man, it's really hard to tell if that's N01 or NC1. Kind of looks like it might just be mangled. It might be a mangled O or it might be a C. C1 is common. Okay, so that is the ground, probably. Um, got people saying, yeah, just go get a multimeter. Yeah, I guess I, you know what, we could do that, actually. We could just go get a multimeter. I mean, why not, right? If I could just, there's like a plastic 
housing bit on the back. Like, if I could just pop that off, I'd, this would be great. I think you can, but I think what you'd have to do is, um, is untwist those ones that are twisted. All, all four of them are like that, so it seems like that's intentional. Um, got someone asking if it's a double action switch. I only feel one actuation point. Okay. I'm gonna go get the multimeter. Be right back. If we can, if we can work, if we can make this work, that would be awesome. I'd be super psyched if, for whatever reason, both of those um, pins get shorted when you flip the switch. Okay. Now I am not an electronics wizard, but I think I know what I'm looking for here. Da, 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 da. So it plugs into that thing. Uh, okay, so we are looking for resistance when the switch is open and closed. All right, now I just got to figure out how to hold these things in place well enough that they are not going to move around. Okay. So that broken pin back there, if we can line that up, then when the switch is closed, we should have basically no resistance. Oh, put it in connectivity slash diode mode. Man, so again, not a wizard. You're gonna have to walk me through that one. I have, other than looking it up when I need to use it, confession time, guys, I have hardly touched my multimeter since high school. So please forgive me. Forgive me for I have sinned. I feel like I just need one more hand. Uh, oh, that video is frozen again, stupid thing. Yeah, all good. Deactivate, activate, and we should be back. There we go. Yep, sorry about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. That's good. Very low resistance between C1 and NC1. That would seem to suggest to me that they might be the same thing. So that might be NC1 instead of NO1 or N01. Let me check N01 and NC1. So sorry, I know you guys want me to use continuity mode, but I'm just going to go with what I know right now because that's going to make my life a little bit easier. Come on, just touch that thing. Come in. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh. Wait. Yeah, I think we got a problem. I don't think this is going to work, this idea. Okay. Yep. Oh, wait, hold on, it's not lined up. Man, it's really hard to touch that broken pin. There we go, so I press the button. So this is the original connections. I press the button, low resistance, so that is opening the circuit. I let go of the button, high resistance. That is closing the circuit. Now my remaining pins, you can see, press the button. Oops, I'm not touching it. Ah, get in there. Get in there, you vicious monster. Okay, there we go. So, ah, there we go. Press button, high resistance. Release button. Oh, no, I must not be touching it right now. Did I ignore it? I think it's the opposite behavior, though. No, it's just not doing anything now. Oh, interesting. I thought it was doing something before. Okay, either way, I think that this is not going to work. Wait. Oh, yeah, there. 
Wait, wow. See, I got that low resistance value. When was that? What happened? Okay. Fine. Oh, I know what's happening. It's touching that broken off pin. Dang it! Yeah, it sucks. I don't have a good way to, uh, I just don't have a good way to fix it. It's, if there was a little bit more nubbin left on, I could probably, I could probably solder something there. But there isn't, there's just like nothing. It's, it's, it's flush, like it's sheared right off. Uh, PL withy, yes, that's what we've determined. Um, so it's shortened to uh, no one uh, or NC1 when it's open, and then it's shorted to no one when it isn't open. So that's why that one had no connection on it. All right, fine. So all this is now is just a, a, a drive activity LED, and I'm just going to move it down to the bottom slot. Fine. Then I just need to be really careful with what was my reset switch and move that up to the top. I can live with that. I mean, I've lived with having no power switch. I've lived with having no reset switch for all these years. I can, I can live without it for a little while longer. Oh, I think this hole, the tolerances are even tighter to get the switch out. Oh, man. Do I really have to unscrew it the whole way? Oh, that's annoying. Actually, oh, Silver Match makes a good suggestion. Get the soldering iron and just try melting away a little bit of the plastic to get a connection there. I could do that. Okay, we are not defeated yet, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm putting that back in because that is going to be a royal pain in the butt to deal with. Yeah, that's going back in for now. Okay, BRB, soldering iron. Uh, where is my soldering iron? Oh, here it is. Okay, soldering iron, solder. Where's my flux? Where's my ancient flux? I think that's all I need. Oh, yeah, a little bit of sacrificial wire. Yep, that's uh, probably small enough. Yeah, sure. And then where are my wire strippers? Uh, there you are. Okay. All right. Woo! This is turning into a real adventure. I have no idea how interesting this is. But what I do know is that this video is brought to you by... iFixit's Mahi Driver Kit includes iFixit. their quarter-inch aluminum screwdriver handle with a magnetic bit socket, knurled grip, and swivel top plus 48 driver bits. Check it out at the link below. Man, why haven't I just been running sponsor spots every time I have to go and get something? That would be brilliant. So massive thanks to iFixit for... Uh, for sponsoring this uh, this episode today. People are saying flux, no. Flux, no, okay. Well, I mean, if all we're trying to do is melt the thing, yeah, flux, no, I suppose. Where's that switch at? All right, good luck, everybody. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys a better angle here with the uh, the webcam. As long as it doesn't fall over or anything, this should be, this should be serviceable. Let's have a look here. How's that? All right, so basically what we're trying to do here is melt away, yeah, melt away a little bit of the plastic in there. Let me try and get you guys a good look. Why am I having such a hard time? There we go. Melt away a little bit of the plastic there so that I can solder a little wire to it. Yes, burnt plastic is bad, I know. It's not like I'm a burnt plastic fan. It's just I need to put a wire on that thing. And burnt plastic is the way for me to do that. That's all. Okay, let's clean that. There we go. Okay, let's get some more burnt plastic up in this biz. Oh 
oh yeah, we burn in that plastic real good, real swell. <laughs> well, we've definitely got access to the pin there. Okay. Um, use a table to solder on. This is really not safe. You sound like my mom. Okay. Let's put this down here. There we go. There. You want a table? All right, there's your table. You like that? Is that better? Okay. So what I'd really like to do, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, is like tin this thing somehow. Oh boy. Yep, this is horrible. Whose idea was this? <laughs> oh boy. We gored it. We gored it. Let me see here. Actually, holy smokes, I think it might actually be tinned. It's not uh, like a brass color anymore, it's a silver color. <laughs> David M in float planes, like, I've done way worse than this, but it's fun to mock. Yeah, exactly. See, I know what you guys are like. I know what you guys are about. Okay, I wish I had a nice little pair of side cutters, snippy snips right now, because these are, this combination of plastic and solder is not amazing to pick away with my fingernails, but I don't really have much of a choice right now. Okay. Um, I think I'm just gonna try and melt away a bit more here. Yeah, we're going full melt here. Oh yeah, that's way more exposed. Just gotta try not to breathe in while I'm doing this. Yeah, this is a bit of a different definition of not safe for work. At LMG, this is probably more, more truly not safe for work. All right, okay, we exposed. It's quite exposed now, okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to try to it again. Mm, it's still balling up on here. You get on there. Come on. Just melt. Melt too vicious. Bing. Okay. I can't tell if that worked or not. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna throw some sacrificial wire on here. Okay, and let's see what happens. Mm, sorry guys, it's, there's a limit to how much I can show you right now just because this is awkward enough to work on, let alone try to film. Okay, so that wire is on there. There you go, see that? Now we can check our switch operation with the multimeter again. Yes, I know I'm supposed to be using continuity mode. No, I'm not going to be using continuity mode because I don't remember how to do that from high school. So I'm just gonna do it the way that I know how to do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, let's just turn that off for now. It's still gonna be really hot, so I still gotta be careful here, but back to the switch. So one of these needs to go on uh, this pin right here. There we are. Oh man, that's that one's really hard to hold the thing on. Uh huh. Very low resistance. Okay, that's not what we wanted. Oh, I think it's touching two pins. Oh, you know what? This one's actually pretty easy then, because I can just touch both of these. Here we go. Let's see if we got it. 
Wait, no, it doesn't work like that, apparently. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, because they would just be shorting between them. Dang it. Okay, so that needs to go there. I need one more hand, you know? Okay, I think... Oh, man. Arr. Just got, like, a little nubbin to hit there. Noom, stop. 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 Okay. High resistance and low resistance. <gasps> High resistance. Low resistance. Hey. All right. We good. It be fixed for now. Okay. All right, so now all I need to do then is uh, solder together these. Frickin' A. It's fixed. Let's go ahead and uh, make some sacrificial wire uh, exposed. Copper here. Na, 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 na. Now I gotta try to make sure I don't accidentally rip it off there because I've only got a little tiny nubbin to work with. That's what she said. Okay. Ah, these wire strippers are really worn out. Glue that bad boy. Oh yeah, we're gonna hot glue this for sure. Come on. Okay, good. Oh no, it came off! No! Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Because if we did it once, then we can do it again. I, kn I knew that was a bit of a cold solder joint, so it's probably just as well that it came off now rather than later. Um, okay. Fluxy time. This is my ancient 10 year old flux that still sort of works and I'm too cheap to replace because it's still mostly full. Okay. Now I got my little wiry wire. No way guys, you called, you called nothing float plane chat. All right, let's get uh, let's get our better better feed here. Uh, all three. There we go. Try and get you guys a good look at what's going on. Okay, we are heated up. And we are raring to go. Here we go. Take a deep breath and relax. Boy, that's hot. Owie. Okay, is that on there now? Oh yeah, now it's on there. Okay, cool. I probably should check and make sure it actually still works, I guess. That seems like the right due diligence thing to do. So back on there. Back on there. Uh huh. Um, oh, this is such a pain in the butt to make contact with. And um, oh, shoot, the button's on the other side now. That makes sense. Okay, maybe I can just lay that one there. That would be trays convenient. Uh, nope. I'm not getting the desired behavior right now, but I can't tell if it's just because I'm holding it wrong. iPhone style, you know? I feel like that might be the case. 
Um, oh, son of mine. Are you there? Is anybody in the house even? I just need someone to come press a button. Can somebody press a button? Okay, maybe if I just like jam this end down the she thing, it'll kind of. Ow! Oh, I stabbed myself. Ah, dang it. Oh, that hurt. It hurts. It hurts me. Okay. Oh, I think I can get that one to stay. Okay, that one's staying. That's good. Okay, now I just need this one while I press the button. Okay, I think we good. It's not doing anything though, which is weird. Um, is my multimeter just flaking out on me here? Like why has it got these random AF readings right now? Okay, resistance should be one. When it's not doing anything, okay? We good? There. Okay, you guys can see what's going on now. You guys can help me out, all right? Okay, so this one, oh yeah, if I come at this one from this angle, oh, who's calling me now? Whatever it is, it better be incredibly important. Oh, that 1-800 number? Definitely not. Definitely a low priority low right now. Okay, so that's on there. Okay, that, that, get, get in there. Get, get in there. Okay, good. So we got, uh, okay, I, I might not be able to let you guys see what's going on because I got to see what's going on. Oh, look at that, you guys can see that too. How about that? Okay, we got one. Okay, just, what's going on here? There we go, one, lower than one. One. Lower than one, please, please. Yes, good, it still works. Huh. Woo! Wait, can I turn that off? Turn off my multimeter when I'm done. All right. Freaking rock on, we're good. So now I just need to, I'm just going to, yeah, rip the connector off this or should I just solder it to the spade connector? I'm just gonna solder it to the spade connector there. I've had enough. Stripping wires off things for the time being. Hello. Are you tuned yet? Hello, please. How about you? Are you tinned? No, you're not. Now you're tinned. Okay. We got full tin now, boys. Tin time. Okay. Not my prettiest work. Also, far from my worst work, as you guys probably know. Here we go. So there it is. That is my repaired switch. Not pretty, but we will never see it. So it doesn't matter. Awesome! I'm actually very, very happy right now with this result. Verge level, this is not verge level. You guys, and you guys gotta, you gotta put that behind you, all right? That was a long, that was a long time ago. The verge has done plenty of perfectly credible PC, gaming PC builds since then. I'm just kidding, I actually don't think they have. I just don't think they've done anything. I love it and hate it at the same time. Hot glue and electrical tape it. You know what? Um, that's actually not a terrible idea. Um, at least to at least to tape it down. Okay, I will BRB with some tape. That's a really good idea. Oh man, I have done. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, I should run the other sponsor while I'm gone. Uh, this uh, is also brought to you by um, Drop.com. It's featuring the Drop THX AAA 789 audio amplifier made with THX Limited. 
It features THX's feed-forward topology technology, which reduces distortion by 20 to 40 decibels. It's capable of driving the audio to any headphones with its three different outputs. It's got balanced, quarter-inch, and three and a half millimeter jack outputs, and delivers clear, sharp audio and bass without the bloat. It's got a one-year warranty, and you can check it out at the link in the video description. Like magic, look at that. He's back with the electrical tape. Do you know, I probably had the electrical tape the whole time. I was just looking for an excuse. Okay, who in chat is saying we're not even 5% done? Uh, we, are, we are at least 5% done. I think we're more than 5% done. I am reasonably confident that we are more than 5% done. Here. All right. Oh, so exciting. You know what I'm going to do, though? Just for, just as a sanity check, is I'm going to actually test it. And, like, once it's actually screwed into the case here, I'm going to test it one more time just to make sure. This time over at the other end of the conductor. Uh, okay, so let's screw that on. Tighten that up. Mm, it's as tight as I can get it with my fingers, I think. Ah! Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh! Got it. Yes! Okay. I'm on a high right now, but uh, all it takes is for one thing to go catastrophically wrong to end it and uh, put us at a low. This is actually an easier way to do this. I should have done this in the first place. I'm just going to pop that on there, pop that on there. Here it goes. Let's press the power button. Hey, 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 look at that. Power button, ladies and gentlemen. Repaired. Here's a final look at it before we close this up for good, and we never see that again. See? Not too shabby. All right. Multimeter away. Probably won't need that for the rest of this project, but I'm not going to put it too far out of reach. Flux away. Oh, why don't I put all of those supplies in one place? Mm, let's clean up the tip a little bit. Always clean the tip when you're done, ladies and gentlemen. Always, every time. It's important. You never know when you're going to need it again. There. Oh shoot, it's on that locking extension cord that I have. I gotta unlock that because I'm gonna need it out. I'm gonna need a heat gun later. Okay, cool. Whew. Now we can go ahead and uh, put those front radiators back in, start the rebuild process. It's time to rebuild what was lost, ladies and gentlemen. There will be more shenanigans for sure, though, when we get to hardline water cooling. All right, where's my screws for that? Uh, hmm, where's the other radiator for that? I have not done an amazing job of keeping everything organized. Oh, there it is. <laughs> cool, I found my radiator. Woo! <laughs> that's, a, that's fortunate. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back together. And, yeah, you know, in a perfect world, what I would love to do is actually fix this mount so that they go in properly. I guess it doesn't really matter, though. Let's jam those hardline fittings on there. If they're in all the way, go ahead and tighten them up. It's kind of inspired by, like, SLI fittings for these radiators. So it's kind of a nice way to run two cards that are right next to each other. So instead, it's two rads that are right next to each other. I've got some garbage that I don't want to end up back in the rig. Okay. Since these are already hardline um, water-cooled, 
I don't need to change anything about them to match the new build. So let's go ahead and switch cameras. There we go. And that feed is frozen again because it's a derp. But that's okay because there's a super quick way to fix it. And there we go. So these are hot glued in just to make sure they don't come apart evidently. And these are, well, hold on a second. How does that bracket figure into all this? Oh, wow. So I think, I think the bracket needs to go on actually before I reattach it to this rad. Oh, interesting. All right, that's fine. We can pull that off relatively easily. I can see why for the first few years when I still remembered what building this thing was like, that I didn't rebuild it. This makes a lot of sense now. Okay. So, oh boy, thinking, thinking. There we go. I think, no, 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 this way. Eh. There we are. Now would be a perfect time to put a bunch of RGB fans in the front, but we're not gonna do that. I will put some RGB in the inside just for lulls though. Okay, so these, this has gotta come up and over here. Come on, there we go. Okay, and I don't know how much you guys can or can't see right now, but Oh no, oh no. That screw fell in there. There we go. No problem. Easy peasy. Oh, these anti-vibration uh, corner pieces on the fan are catching on each other. I really don't want them to do that. So please, please stop. Thank you. There we go. Okay, that is basically positioned how I want it now. Other than this corner not being lined up. And I think we're ready to screw this back in. Nice. Whew, I'm having fun. Luca Scorpion over on float plane says that all this rad cleaning talk, it makes it uh, what is it? It's a painful reminder that I need to do mine. Yeah, I know. It's such a pain in the butt, though. Everyone, you know, likes the cool things about water cooling, but nobody, literally nobody, likes the pain in the butt things about water cooling, which is pretty much everything, if you really get down to it. All right, fan number one is in. And number two needs to be realigned a little bit. There it is. Oh yeah, now's a good time to, yeah, Rod, even Rod, BS Mod's like, oh, I should flush my loop. Literally a professional computer modder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Nobody likes it. It's not like, you know, me when I was in school, you know, when people would be like, nobody likes you. But actually, I did have a couple friends. This is like, literally, nobody likes it. Not even one. Oh, I should probably do a handful of uh, super chats just in case people send super chats and then tune out. Now seems like a good time to go do that. Just makes it so I can't monitor OBS. So that's one of the reasons I haven't really been looking at it that much. Uh, I'm just gonna do like a couple highlight ones here, guys, cause there's far too many. Uh, Hendrix says, here's 10 heroes for always skipping your ads. Uh, thank you, Hendrix. Appreciate you, fam. Uh, Spencer Gu says, hey, Linus, just built my first PC a couple days ago. Thanks to all of your videos. Hey. Cool stuff. Um, shout out to Keith Streeter as well. 
Uh, LaSalle Rhymes says, thanks for helping us get through this lockdown. Hey, my absolute pleasure. Um, I'm honestly having a lot of fun making videos from home. Um, I shot a short circuit last night with my son uh, about this retro console, it's called the Evercade. And it was kind of neat seeing him play a game that I played when I was a kid, uh, Double Dragon uh, for the NES. Uh, Double Dragon 2? Oh, that one for NES or SNES. Whatever, anyway, one of the Double Dragon games. And like, just kind of being confused by how bad it is in a certain sense. Um, there's one part where uh, you go up on the roof and you have to like kind of jump up under this thing, but the jump controls are not obvious. And so he just ends up like kind of walking off the roof because the forced perspective to make it feel 3D has the roof kind of slanted. So when you walk towards it, you just kind of, you kind of fall off. You did it like three times in a row. It's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, Alex Santos says, you should upgrade your cooling by removing the stacked radiators. Oh, man. The comment section on yesterday's video was, like, triggered central for me. Just the degree to which people did not understand what they were viewing was spectacular. I've rarely seen it in all my time as a YouTuber. Uh, just the number of people that are like, um... Actually, you didn't test the scenarios that Corsair said when if we were all watching the same video, they would know that in fact we did test both scenarios that Corsair's, I should say Corsair's representative because it was one person at Corsair who, uh, who sent me these notes. Um, we did test both scenarios. We tested the one where the case has a front intake that is Got a that has got a radiator on it, sucking in fresh air, heating up that air, and then using that heated air to cool a second radiator. So unlike the Hack Pro, where that second radiator was in the back, we positioned it in the top, just like the flow simulation that they sent us, showing us that it would not work, and then it did work, and it was fine. And then the second scenario was about stacked rats, like right in front of each other, just like this. Also tested that in the Minecraft server where we had three, not two, but three stacked rads. We removed one, CPU temps went up five degrees. And then we've got people saying, well, well actually what Corsair was saying was that it's not optimal. No, if what they had said was that it's not optimal, I wouldn't have argued with them because that's true. It's not optimal to do it that way. Optimal would be every radiator having access to fresh air. That's optimal. What they said is that it will not help or it could even make it worse. So what we tested was if it helps at all, and of course it does. Now there are a variety of reasons why it helped for us and did not help in Corsair's flow simulation. Um, I talk about those in the video, but none of it matters because they told me, hey, you're water cooling wrong because this won't work, this does work. Is it optimal? No. In this case, do I have somewhere else to put a radiator where it will have access to fresh air? No, I do not. So this is better than nothing. So that's my rationale for it. Um, yeah, very, 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 very frustrating reading the comments on yesterday's video, just like the level of, it's, it was kind of like that one that I did a while back about whether running water cooling on your system so that your CPU is at a cooler temperature, whether that makes your room cooler. And the comment section is split right down the middle. There's the people that go, your testing is flawed. Obviously, it makes the room cooler if your CPU is running at a cooler temperature. And then the other half of the comments are, this is a stupid video. Why did you even need to test this? Obviously, it's not going to make the room cooler. And like... I'm sitting here going, both of these sides of the argument have made their way all the way down to the comment section and not managed to read any other comments before leaving their comment because they would both know, oh, no, I'm actually wrong. The test is perfectly fine. And no, a cooler running CPU at a lower temperature does not mean that it's actually outputting less thermal energy, at least not in a measurable way. It does actually make it slightly more efficient. Um, and then the other side, the people that are like, why did you even need to make this video? All they had to do was read one of the comments from the people that didn't understand what was going on to know why we had to make that video because so many people think that. 
um, if your CPU is running at 40 degrees versus 70 degrees, that your room in the summer will be cooler. It doesn't work like that. Your CPU outputs however much heat it outputs. It's just a matter of how efficiently you are drawing it away. So yeah, every once in a while, like we make a video that I'm like, hey, we have answered a question that you know people had, and we've kind of done it in a once and for all way, so you know we can put this stupid conversation to rest forever, um, and people don't get it anyway, and then I get really frustrated. <laughs> you know, maybe I just need to make, needed to make a better video. You know, maybe my video wasn't clear enough. You know, I'm open to that. It's just you know it's frustrating because I do try my best, right? Um, all right, so let's get this out of the way. And then I, I do see how this works now. So, all right, I'm gonna try not to break this this time. There we go. Ew, there's a dead mosquito in the front radiator, gross. Okay, let's move that forward. There we go. All right, so that's on there. Just gotta slide this forward a little bit more and then latch it on. It was not actually hot glued down. It was just these, uh, these nuts in the bottom of the case here. I just gotta slide this back radiator over these nuts until it's locked into place. Hmm. Okay, this is really tricky and I can see why I hated doing it the first time. Oh man. All right, so I'm gonna lift these up as high as they go. Kinda wish I had that hot glue that one of the float plane chat peeps was talking about there right now. Hot glue would be real nice right about now, just to keep things out of my way even. Okay, there we go. All right, these fans, I'm just gonna kind of put here so that they're not pulling on that front radiator. Okay, let's slide this forward. I gotta slide that really far forward. Okay, and then we'll slide it back. Is that catching? I can't tell if that's catching. It's really hard to tell, actually. I can't tell what that's stuck on either. Is it this bundle of cables down here? It might be. I don't think the rad goes all the way down to the bottom of the case, though, does it? Okay, well, at any rate, these cables are definitely out of the way of that radiator now. So I'm not sure what's causing it to be stuck here. Yeah, let's have a look. Have a look, see. Oh, whoa, hey, there we go. Oh, that felt good. Oh, no way. Was that it? Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Now, tell me something, guys. Should I do it? Should I put a hole in the side of the case, try and just sort of eyeball emulate it and get this screwed in once and for all, since we're being ambitious today? You guys wanna see it? Oh, and Moseri says don't do it over in float plane. <laughs> Twitch chat is just full spam, do it. Do it! Oh man. Um, yeah, most of the rest of the float plane chat says do it. All right, all right, I'm gonna get my drill. I'm gonna get my drill. You know what, I waited so long to run our pre-roll. Oh no, I can't actually run that right now because it's just gonna be a, a black screen for a long time. Okay, I'll, I'll be right back, I'll be right back. Full send, full send ladies and gentlemen, we're doing it. Oh man. Should I try and countersink it too? I don't know if I have the tools on hand to do that. And if I don't countersink it, I don't know if my rails are gonna go back on properly. All right, drill's got battery, so that's a good sign. Uh, yeah. Oh, almost got my foot there, but I didn't, so it's all good. Oh, you know what? I got this thing. That could, oh, oh wait, oh no, I think I do have one of those bits. Where is it? There it is. Oh yes. Not designed for steel, mind you, but uh, you know what the hey? What the hey? You know what I'm saying, guys? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, 
all right, I think I got everything I need here. I'm gonna put a hole in the side of a kit. You know, I'm gonna get a slightly bigger bit just in case it comes to that. Yep. Oh yeah. What can go wrong? I just slammed the door on the ethernet cable that's running the stream. That could go wrong. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully y'all are still there. <laughs> Gonna find out soon enough. Come on stream, still be live. We good? We good, all right, cool, cool. <laughs> oh man, that would have been terrible. What a stupid way to kill your stream, right? All right. So, for those of you who weren't here when this happened, what happened was the original design of the case, the mounting holes for this radiator bracket here were not lined up in the original design by accident. So I just kind of YOLO'd it. I just kind of shoved it in there and I assumed that the second radiator would be held in place by the nuts that are along the bottom, which worked out just fine, and by the front radiator being screwed into the front of the case, which actually did work out just fine. But obviously we could do better by screwing in this radiator properly. So, that's the goal. Uh, these all seem to be positioned correctly. So if I hold this rad upright and just kind of like eyeball it, I don't know, it should be fine, right? What could go wrong? Have I been streaming for two hours already? Wow, I have made shockingly little progress. Um, Tomorrow's gonna be a tough day because I gotta shoot like other videos this week and stuff. Okay, so I don't know if, how well you guys can see what I'm doing here, but I'm, I'm going for it. Like I'm just, I'm just lining this thing up. And it looks like it's a little bit lower. Okay. I mean, that looks pretty right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Here goes. Okay. Yep, that's definitely... It's going. Um, can I shove this out of the way? No, I can't really. Oh boy, hopefully I didn't mangle the threads too bad, but I think I got it lined up actually. So now I'm just gonna grab one of these handy dandy, I, I love these things. Uh, where'd I put it? I love them, but I don't know where they are right now. Gosh darn it, where is it? Uh, oh no. Where'd I put the little countersinky thingamaboober? Uh, I guess we're not countersinking. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, okay, I brought it up here because I knew I was going to use it. Hey, got it. So I, lo I love these things. These are great. Uh, oh, can you see? Got a little thing right here. There you go. So you can put a little countersinkiness so that you can use a countersunk screw from the outside of the case. And it's nice and flush, so if you need to put your uh, server rails back on, there's going to be room for it. Needs a little more. This bit was 100% designed for wood, not metal, so. Slow going. I think that should be good though. Let's give it a shot. Here's how far off the original design was. Uh, give you guys a look at that. Oh, that one. Is that one frozen? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that one's frozen. That's fine, give it the old deactivate, reactivate. Oh, nope. <laughs> nope, the handheld one, the handheld one be dead. Uh, all right, neat. <laughs> well then. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have a convenient way to fix that. 
I, I've unplugged and replugged, and I have deactivated and reactivated. Oh, hey, there it is. Nice. Okay, so that's how far off it was. There you go. So I think I have it lined up right now, but we're going to find out in a sec if I actually got it. I'm just going to use one of these uh, black countersunk screws that are that came with the case and see if that lines up there. So let's see. Oops, slide that down at the bottom. Is that going to reach? Come on, baby. Are you going to go? Is it a goer? Oh, no way. It's a goer. Nice. Everything is actually going shockingly well so far on this stream. Like, I'm worried, you know? Whenever things go this well, I get, I get worried. All right, where's my drill bit? Time for the other side. There we go. Okay, so I gotta get it slid in there and then right about. Oh yeah, it looks like both of them were too far. Yeah, too far forward and a little bit too low. Well, if I just kind of use the other one to landmark, that would probably be a pretty good bet at this point as it's pretty symmetrical, probably. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I want it right there. Okay, I think that's it. Wish me luck, everybody. I got this. A little bit, a little bendy. Yeah, definitely a little, a little bit of a bendy boy there. All right. Okay. Hopefully, I didn't mangle that too hard. Here we go. It's time to check. We going? We good? Oh, shoot. I dropped the thing. Okay. Okay, here we go. Are we in? Should we hack the mainframe? Mm. We haven't quite hacked the mainframe yet. Needs a bit more mainframe hacking. Mm, okay, no, it's not quite, not quite lined up there. I think. Oh, hold on. We just need to push it down a bit. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, I think I got it. Just pull in. All right. You know what? She's a little slanty, but I think I think she'll do. I think she'll do. Yep. We're calling that good. Nice. Whew. Freaking awesome. There you go. So that's where that one's going to go in. And these uh, these ugly cables here are just gonna tuck down here. Well, now that the mounting mechanism works properly, this is actually not gonna be as horrible to take out and put back in if I ever wanted to do it again. Not that I do. I actually have no desire whatsoever to take this apart and put it back together some more. It will be, it will be easily another four years before this ever happens again. Oh man, YouTube chat, Russ. 
you leave me alone about that video yesterday. I don't want to hear about it right now. I was traumatized, okay? I was traumatized by the, by the comments. Um, now I just got to figure out how I cable managed these fans in the front here. I think what's going wrong is that this one needs to go under the rad and it's a little bit of a droopy boy right now. So there we go. All right. That can go right there. And that one can go right there next to the repaired. Actually, this can get out of my way for a second here. And then that can go. Get down there, you monster. Okay, there you are. Okay. Those are in. Yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. Huh. Um, I'm going to actually vacuum up those metal filings. That seems like... A uh, grand idea right about now. Give me one sec. Ah, shoot. There we go. Let's put that front rad back in. Oh man, so close to finishing this build that, uh... ha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. All right. This was a bit of a pain in the butt to line up. I do remember this. So just gotta kinda, there we go. Just give it a little lifty there. And try to get that through. Nope, I missed. Uh, hmm. As soon as the as soon as the screws align with the fans, then I'm good. I just I do need to get the screws aligned with the fans. Oh, there you go. I got gotcha. you. I got you. You you got got. Okay, next one. Just need to get the two corners, and then it's all it's all gravy after that. Hmm. Don't like that cable management right now. I want this cable under that other fan. Need a little pokey tool. Hey, I fix it's one of the sponsors for today's uh, video, so you're gonna want to check them out at the link in the description. They've got all kinds of good little pokey, proddy, screwy tools for just this kind of thing. Uh huh. So why are you going like that anyway? This is stuck on. That's weird. Yeah, you can't be, you can't be over there. So this one is, it's up too high. It won't go down low enough, which is weird. How did I have that cable managed before? I don't really understand. Because the next one, next fan over definitely has to uh, be able to sit down a little bit lower than this is going to allow it to be right now. Hmm. It doesn't look like there's any way for me to pull it through more, though. It's all plugged into a Molex connector over there. Interesting. Well, this is an unforeseen challenge. Oh, maybe I just have the wrong one there. Maybe it's this one that's supposed to be there. Uh, let's undo that work and try this one instead. Yeah, how's that? Mm, that one's a touch better. Yeah, that might be it. All right, let's try that. 
And that's the thing about cable management. It's like it looks nice, but it makes maintenance just more difficult. And I'm the kind of person who does maintenance for fun sometimes. So basically, I'm just making fun more difficult sometimes for myself. OK, let's see if this works now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like with that one as my far, farthest most fan, we're in good shape and everything is not in the way of mounting the other fans. OK. Far most? I think that's a word. Um, what on earth is that screwed into right now? Oh good, nothing, because that was real confusing. Okay, <laughs> let's lift this up. Okay, this was another design flaw on this case. Uh, I can show it to you guys in a second, I just want to get this screwed in. Got to kind of hold this over real tight. Oh shoot, it's frozen. Uh, one second here, guys. Activate, activate, should be back. There we go. Oh, another design flaw in this case is these USB ports in the front here. The cables for them, we didn't really think about. We put USB ports on the, we put the cutouts on the front, but didn't really consider how bulky the housings for them are at the back. And there wasn't really sufficient room for them. So you gotta kinda like jam the radiator up into the cables there in order to get it in place. Very uncomfortable experience for everyone involved. Um, where'd my screwdriver go? There it is. Okay. Come on. Where are you at? Okay, I see you. I see you. You are not even close. Not even close right now. How are you so not close? Maybe I can just, you know, jam it a bit harder. Is that, is that the solution? Because I don't have another one right now. There it is. Okay. So that first one's in. I'd like to get at least one screw in for each of the fans before going any further. I can just, I'm going to just kind of le lever this one up a little bit like that and then put the top screw in for this one. Yep, yeah, you just, you just catch. Please. There you go. There you go. You're good. You're fine. This is fun. Everybody's having fun. Is that caught? Yeah, that's caught. All right, nice. Whew. So now it's easy to lift these other ones up because I can just kind of pull them up like that in order to get the screws lined up. Radiator mounting, man. I don't know what's worse for water cooling, rad mounting or reservoir mounting. Depends on your res. The way we designed it in this one was for me, and we knew that I hate dealing with reservoir mounting, so we made it super easy. There we go. So I've got one screw in, at least one screw in each of them now, which means the rest of them should go in pretty, pretty effortlessly. Still, still time for this to be a pain in the butt though. Ah, come on. Just come up a little bit there. There we go. Sweet. One. Um, see, I got all these fans on the right way and everything. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Did that catch? Yep, I feel it pulling in. Good. Let's do a diagonal one on this fan. Yep, dropped a screw. That's all good. I saw where it felt. There we go. Oh, that's pulled in. Nice. 
I only need one more. Ah, I only need one more screw in before I'm I'm home free on the front screws here. Oh yeah, we're good. Nice. So let's tighten these up. You always want to put them in loosely at first, especially with radiators, just because the tolerances on these things can be a little bit funny on both cases and radiators. So if you tighten up your first one real tight, don't be surprised if the next three won't go in quite right. Whereas if you put them all in loosely, you have a much better chance. Oh. Wait, what? That's weird. Why is that one not going in? We're supposed to be home free now. Well, maybe the issue is that I'm not following my own advice and I tightened up the other two on this fan before going at this one here. No, nope, that seems like it's going in okay. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this stream. I kind of have no idea at this point. It's had some issues, but as long as everyone's having a good time, then I guess we good. So far in this stream, we have fixed the audio, spilt some water. Okay, I got a summary over that. I want to read that summary on float plane. I am one screw short, which is a surprise. I was not expecting to be one screw short. I will have to find that. Oh, there it is. All right, right there on the table. All good. I love this summary. So far in this stream, we have fixed the audio, spilt some water, disassembled the entire system, cleaned some radiators and fans, fixed the power button, and put the fans back in. Hey, we have also now, last screw, put the rads back in. They in. All right. See, that's pretty good, hey? Right there. Radiators back in. And actually, better than before. Everything about the system is better than before now. Uh, where was my pokey tool that I borrowed from this? Wait a minute. Am I one radiator screw short? Because I definitely have a, oh yeah, I am. I found an extra screw. And there we go. All right, cool. Let's put my pokey tool back in here. Gotta put that away when you're done with it, you know? Keep that somewhere on hand, because I'm probably gonna need it again. And now it's time to take a look at that motherboard. Oh, okay. I'm actually gonna put the case aside for just a little bit here. Is there anything up there? No, okay. So we can just put that there and let's put the motherboard down. Because I'm a little bit concerned about this, kind of this black color here. Um, oh wait. What the heck? Interesting. So I didn't realize this, but apparently it's like a top, a top cover of some sort. So, hmm, yeah, it's hard to tell because we've got a lot of reflection here. Like I want you guys to see the light, but I don't want you to get the reflections. You know what, here, if I just grab something black, that might help a little bit. Now I'll just put this, uh, Cable mod box here to stop the reflections. Yeah, there we go. So if you look under it, you can see there's kind of a little bit of blue gunk buildup along the top lip there. And then under it, it's actually still silver. So it seems like whatever is behaving strangely here might be just related to this top cover piece and not to the functional part of the block. They didn't go and put like is it just like some buildup, like gunk buildup residue, or is it, did they actually, were they stupid enough to put any aluminum in there? Surely they couldn't have been. Uh, this is um, an ASRock X570 Aqua, by the way. This was sent over to me by ASRock for my personal rig upgrade. Um, Hazard says the silver reacted with the copper. I really don't think so, because that's, that's not copper for sure. Uh, there's no exposed copper right there. And two, these are gold fittings actually on the motherboard, not silver fittings, just for that little bit of extra bling, you know? You know what I'm saying? Got that bling bling. I'm um, just trying to see if this is like a plastic plate that 
comes off easily. It appears it does not. You know what? I'm kind of not worried about it, to be honest with y'all. Um, it is going to be a multi-hour ordeal to disassemble this thing. Uh, Gamer Low Graphics says, you haven't changed the tubing between the rads. I do not intend to change the tubing between the rads. That is staying. My tubing is clean. Like, this is a, this is a clean loop, guys. Like, my water was clean. My tubes are clean. Check this out. That is a clean tube. So uh, I'm really, really not worried about that. I mean, you can even see in the, in the blocks too, like in this uh, chipset portion of the block here, that is a crystal clear loop. There's no buildup there whatsoever. What you're seeing is just a little bit of condensation from it sitting out over the last little while here. Um, okay, I'm making, I'm making no changes here. That's what, that's what I have ultimately decided, I think. What I will do, though, is throw some new fittings on it. Um, yeah, or uh, no. No, I'm going to change gears again. This is my ADD approach to computer building. I'll put that down there. And I'm going to plumb up the reservoir and the radiators. We're going hard line, ladies and gentlemen. For better or for worse, well, we're going to try. If I get frustrated and bored, then I might just put my soft tubing back in because it has served me very well. Um, but we're going to try to go hard line here, all right? Okay. Let's have a look at what Jake sent over in my care package today. These are the fittings that he intends for me to use. Got some blue tubing. Going with that blue aesthetic. Okay. These are older fittings, but uh, still good. Got some Primo Chill Revolves. Oh, I got some uh, black. Are these the right size? Gee, I don't know if these look the right size, Jake. I hope they're the right size. Let's have a look here. They look kind of big. I actually don't know if this tubing is all the same size. That could get very interesting very fast. Yeah, this is not all the same tubing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, uh, oh man. Oh no. Okay, have a look here, guys. You can see by the ends, I may not have enough, depending on which tubing Jake expects the fittings for, I may not have enough hard line to go that route. The good news is I will definitely have enough stuff to clean up the loop substantially. Oh, and there might be more good news. Actually, the outer diameter of these might be the same, even if the inner diameter is not. That's very interesting. Okay, so let's have a look here. Is that a good fit? That actually seems like a very snug fit. Oh, I think, I think Jakey boy, I think Jakey boy has got things under control there. Let's go ahead and pop this on. Let's have a look here. And if I plumb this whole thing up and it's no good though, I'm gonna be extremely unhappy. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think we might be good. Mm. Oh yeah, that seems pretty good. All right, so the one that I have two of at least is right. And it's a close enough match to the tubing that's already in there, which I think is this, uh, this lighter, older stuff that I'm not going to stress about it, especially because those are kind of down between the radiators there. So I guess we're doing it. Oh, man, I really like... It's not much of a secret that I kind of hate hardline tubing. Uh, I mean, I don't hate the look, you know? It's super cool. The part I hate is the actually doing it. Um... It's not that I don't know how, 
I just find it far less fun than almost any other kind of computer project. Half inch OD lines, half inch OD lines. Yep, and same fine. Oh, actually, I can just look at this. It's this OD 12 millimeter. Hmm. 12 millimeter. Is that half an inch or is it supposed to be 13 millimeter? Okay. One half inch, two millimeters. 12.7. That should work. Uh, you know who I would really trust on this one? Hey, Rod, are you still watching? Because I would, I, would, I would trust you. Am I going to be good with 12 millimeter tubing on half inch fittings? It feels pretty tight. It feels pretty good. I think I've got a seal here. Rod says, nope, fail. Are you sure, Rod? Are you 100% sure? Seems pretty darn good. Man, if Rod says don't do it though, like, I am asking for trouble. I am cruising for a bruising if I do it. <sighs> EJ Tech, I am reading uh, Float Plane the most. I know what Rod said. I'm just asking him to verify, okay? I don't like it. But Primo Chill does have big O-rings. They do. These are thick old O-rings. Look, it seems... It seems okay. He says, I'll test one. All right, well, in the meantime, then, what I'm going to do is... Oop, no, no, that's fine. It wasn't attached. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test, um, or I'm going to mount the uh, reservoir. Okay. Good old Rod Rosenberg. Good guy, that Rod. I was looking forward to seeing him at LTX. Like, oh, man, there's so many things that I am bummed about about LTX being canceled. Obviously, in the grand scheme of everything that's going on in the world, I am not complaining. Life is good. Um, you know, with all, like, the COVID situation could have affected me far more than it has. I'm just, I, there's these constant reminders. It's like, oh, I'm not hanging out with Rod this year. Well, okay then, you know? I guess I'll hang out with Rod next year when he can cross the border. Okay, oh. Shoot, I've got a fitting that's on there real tight, guys. I don't know if I can remove this bottom fitting here. Let me have a look at what Jake sent me for right angles and stuff, and I'll see how bad of a mismatch that's going to end up being. All right, looks like he sent me black. Great, that's a silver fitting. I mean, it's fine. Uh, Jake sent me the right things. It's just that um, it means that I will have to pull that fitting off, which means I might have to go get some vice grips because I do not see that coming off easily. All right, I'm trying to keep an eye out for you, Rod, but uh, if I don't see your message, and you'll be able to tell because I won't reply to it, um, just shoot me a text, okay? I don't know why people like that like hang out in chat instead of just like calling me if they want to talk to me. He has my number. <laughs> to be clear, Rod, I appreciate you, fam. Like, you know, it's good. It's good stuff. But, uh, yeah, you could just call me if you really needed to talk to me. Maybe that's it. Maybe he doesn't, like, really need to talk to me. He's just, like, hanging out in chat with all you lot. The cool kids, you know? All right. So here's my new right angle fittings. And here's the one that needs to come out. Super, super bulky, ugly fitting there, actually not the current style. Um, yeah, I can tell from how mangled the knurling is on it that I must have used vice grips to put it on. So it kind of makes sense that I will need vice grips to get it off. So I'll be, I'll be right back with some vice grips. That's the only way that's coming off.
Gotta go get my tools. Oh man, it's hard to get in and out of here now. Okay. Rod says, I might have missed some. It'll hold water, but it's not really tight. I'd guess 10 PSI. Oh boy. Should I risk it? Rod, I'm gonna let you make the final call here. I don't wanna disappoint the people tuning into the stream. I said I was gonna go hardline, but if I don't have it, you know, I guess people might understand. He says, I think it'll work. Okay, well, we're going for it then. We're going for it. And if it, if it goes bad, Rod Rosenberg of BS Mods, that's who we're gonna blame, all right? You opened yourself up to it, dude. You opened yourself up to it. Risk it for the biscuit, says Float Plain Chat, so we're doing it. Whew. Stressed. Had enough stress today, and now I got now I got the wrong size fittings here. Risk it. We're here for the legit LTT moments, man. This could be bad though. This could be like super bad. This could be like dead RTX Titan bad. You guys, like, you understand that, right? What you're asking me to do here. All right. Good news is it seals, uh, ooh, oh, hey, no, no, do not quit this program. Seals real nice on my uh, right angle fitting there. This is nice uh, swiveling right angle. It's EK fitting. All right. And then we'll go ahead and tighten. Go ahead and tighten this puppy. Uh, I wish I could get you guys a bit of a better angle on what's going on right now. Maybe this will work. Not three. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm kind of going about a half a turn at a time, and I got to hold the the bottom rotating like the bottom collar. Go another half turn at a time or so. And I'm uh, I'm going to be surprised if this doesn't work. Because remember, it's going to be hardline cooled by me. I've only actually done it start to finish a couple of times. Um, oh, there we go. And the tubing size is not <clears throat> correct. I mean, it's not wrong. It's just not right, you know? It's that kind of situation. When is the UPS replacement video coming, asks... Uh, H. Gris World over on Float Plane. Uh, it's shot, but we are waiting for Eaton, the manufacturer of our, uh, our server room UPS, to give us the go ahead to flip the switch and turn it on. So you might have to wait a touch longer. Once they give the go ahead, though, we are very jazzed to turn it back on and have our server's battery backed up again. There we go. That's on. That's on. <clears throat> Those seem pretty tight. Make sure. Yep. Okay. Now let's see. Do we have enough clearance here? I'm a little bit worried that once I put this reservoir back in here, I'm not actually going to have enough room. Let's go ahead and check real quick. So it sits kind of propped up on the bottom here. There we go. Okay, so that's where it goes. And then I need a, I need a short, whoop! <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Why don't we put you over there instead? Okay, cool. So I need a short piece of tube to see if I'm gonna clear it. Mmm. Okay. That, oof, that is, that is really tight. You know what? I think I've got a solution to that, though. I asked Jake to send over some 45s, and I think we're just going to take the safe route. The last thing we want is to put any more strain on these connections than we absolutely have to, since we've got that, that slight mismatch to the size there. Where did that O-ring go? Oh, I see it. There it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to you know, spend $15 in fittings, um, thanks, EK. And we're going to use a couple of 45s to get over that hump, just like that. Hey, I actually like that other angle a little bit better for this, what I'm doing right now. 
and stay. Awesome. Okay. So there we go. So what that does is that brings it up a little bit so it can get over the reservoir here. I might as well just throw the thing in. You know, that, this feels like there might not be an O-ring on it or it might be a really, yeah, it's just a really skinny one, okay. Wait, is there a recess on this radiator? Mm, no, it should be okay. It's an EK rad too. EK fitting should be fine. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. It's just spinning a little bit easier because uh, it's a little bit wet. Okay, just lots of things stressing me out right now. Let's put that on there. Okay, so that is our strap. Throw that on there. There we go. And if you guys look, that's gonna get me plenty of room, I think, for my reservoir right there. Yep. Okay, I got some other junk in the way here. Yep, there we go. All right, so that is well clear now. Cool. And having a look down here, we've got plenty of space for that run as well. That's one that I will probably end up cheating on a little bit just because while I could do, I think that one's supposed to come up to the top. Here you go. I think it's supposed to come from this bottom one up to the top here. And so I could do like, I don't know, a right angle and then try and do like a, like a here and then up and then here. I am not that good. So what I'm probably gonna do is just cheat it with fittings. I know for sure that I'm gonna need a right angle. So we'll go ahead and put that on right now. David M says, I've completely forgotten what this stream started off doing. Personal rig rebuild, okay? Personal rig rebuild and maintenance. I eat. Holy bananas. We might have a problem. I may not. Oh, yes. There's one more right angle over here. Whew, I thought I might not have enough right angles because what I had intended to do was right angle this puppy over here. There we go. And then I was really sincerely hoping that that was going to pretty much line up with this one here. So I would only have to do the one bend. So it's just straight and then a right angle up to here. That is my sincere hope. All right. The bad news is that I cannot really, I can reposition the re uh, reservoir this way a little bit, but I cannot reposition it this way at all just because of the way the mounting plate works. Cool. We can go ahead and throw the motherboard back in the case, I guess, eh? I mean, nothing, yeah, nothing, nothing prevents me from doing that right now. Oh, that's kind of an annoyance. I never plugged the Molex connector back in for the rear bank of fans. I should do that at some point. Um, yeah, we can do that now, I guess. Oh wait, that's not too hard to get it, is it? Mm, oh, it's a little hard to get it. Okay, if I bring this up, and oh yeah, that's pretty hard to get it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shoot. So here, I can try and get you guys a look at what I'm doing. It's not gonna be easy though. Mm, okay, put that in through the power supply, I guess. No, why not just put the camera in the computer, right? Basically, here we go. This Molex connector right here needs to plug into this here, but I don't have enough slack on it. So I have to kind of work in, like behind the radiator. And if I accidentally pull too hard and pull out the one going into the front rad, I will have to remove the radiators. So the stakes, are extremely high here. Fortunately, oh, I think I just got it. 
So I'm just gonna jam a screwdriver down here to hold the back of it in place while I push it from the front. Hey, there it is. Nice. 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 Okay. Awesome. This really is going better than I could have possibly hoped. Oops. Non-ferrous screws. I keep forgetting. Non-ferrous screws. Watch out for that. Watch out for those non-ferrous screws, ladies and gentlemen. They're dangerous. They're going to drop on you. The worst is when you accidentally drop them into something that is running. That's, that's the worst. And you go like, oh, oh, I forgot, non-ferrous screws. It fell off my magnetic tip screwdriver. Oh no, the thing is on, it shorted it out, it's dead, the game's over. The game's over and you're done. It's the worst. I mean, some people don't put themselves in those situations. I respect that. But I like to live dangerously, you know? Oh, yeah, I ripped that camera again. Uh, you know what? I wonder if it's easier for me to just give it the old pluggy plug. Uh, which one is it? It's the AVIO, whatever the goose it is. Oh, yeah, it's this one. Right. And right. Let's try that. Okay, so that's in. That's in place. Now is as good a time as any to go ahead and put that plug back on. Um, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that right now. No point doing that right now because I'm going to need that open in order to fill the system. I don't know if I'm going to try and fill the system on stream. Do you guys want me to fill the system on stream? I have been streaming for almost three hours. Where the heck is my water? LTTstore.com, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's better. <sighs> All right, sweet. That's on. Let's put the motherboard in. Oh. Start to finish, baby, says Chili Chain. Oh, man. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Oh, oh, wow, great comment from HGRIS World 89 over on Flowplane. Do those power supply holes before you get too far. Oh, thank you. Right, there's a couple more holes we gotta put in the case. If you were here earlier in the stream, which HGRIS obviously was, you'll know that one of my problems with the case is that the power supply holes were misaligned. Um, oh, that's fantastic, thank you. Actually, yet another problem with the case. This is another good one here. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that camera. Give it the old fixy fix. There we go. Deactivate, reactivate. You coming back, Logitech Brio? Yeah, you are. There it is. Cool. Uh, one of the other problems. So one problem. These two holes here do not align with the power supply holes. These ones right here. Other problem, this bracket, the hole to secure it to match this top one, missing. I'm not going to bother with this one though, because as long as like this hole is in, it won't kind of it won't move, it won't like wiggle wobble when I plug in the power cable, and that's the main thing that I'm trying to fix right now. So uh, let's just go ahead and I guess this one right here is going to be the easiest one to fix. Oh, okay. Hmm. And the other thing is that that side one is trickier to fix because I would need to uh, like a super short screw to go into it so that it doesn't interfere with the power supply. All right, I think we're going to go for the bottom one, I guess. Yeah, let's go for let's go for the bottom one. All right. Man, I am two for two nailing my eyeballed drill holes so far today. I don't know if I feel like that luck is going to it's going to hold up, but oh, we're going to give it a shot. Here we go. Oh, man. Here we go. Oh. 
Okay, so where are you at? Oh man, it's just like a little bit low. Like it's more, it's less about drilling a new hole and more like, uh, like widening the old one, honestly. There we go. Oh, that camera died again. The, the USB ports over on the, um, the Thunderbolt enclosure that I'm using are not real happy. They're cutting out a lot today. It's been pretty frustrating. Yeah, it looks like it kind of needs like an activate and deactivate and an unplug and replug in order to fix it properly for the Brio in particular. That's a little bit annoying. Let's see if that comes back. Yeah, there we go. All right, here we are. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go for kind of like a, a widey widening instead of actually drilling a new hole. In that case, I'm gonna use this um, bigger bit that I brought down just in case I missed by a little bit on those other ones. Here we are. Okay. Okay, and you're not supposed to do this, but I'm gonna kind of walk it back and forth. Widen the hole a little bit there. See if that works. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna leave that there to check if I have to do more drilling. Uh, yeah, it's not quite, not quite there. We need to go a little bit down and to the left still. All the metal workers are like, oh no, please stop. But I'm not gonna stop. I'll never stop. Uh, okay. I think I can get a screw in there. Let me see. It, it ain't perfect, but uh, as long as I can get a screw in there, I'm calling it good. Come on, baby. Yeah. Are you gonna thread in for me? Oh yeah, as long as it'll thread in without shearing off the top, I'm calling it good enough. I don't want to drill that anymore, and I have to. Okay, so let's pull this out, and then we're going to give it a quick vacuum to get rid of those metal filings. That's not something you want floating around inside your case. Well, in that case, we might as well put this in. Let's fix this camera angle while we're at it. Given how often it comes up, it would be nice if OBS had like a one touch um, deactivate and reactivate for like input sources. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so we'll put that corner on, and then this one. All right. And that is good enough. Sweet. Fixing problems today. So happy. I love it. One problem I'm going to run into here is that I am running out of screws because I'm making new places to put them. That's fine. I can mount my motherboard with three screws instead of four. There we go. Now I can... Oh, this is great. Now I can plug a cable in without the whole thing moving every time. 
fantastic. Okay. Oh, wow, what happened to this poor uh, tablecloth? Oh man, that is, ooh, that is very unfortunate. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's from the drill. So when I was drilling this, I think it was rubbing against and burning the fabric. Well, rip this white tablecloth, unfortunately. Shoot, this was, this was the clean one. This was the good one. Okay, I got a couple little metal pieces here. I need those out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're dusted. Sweet! Let's bring this over here. Put that camera out of the way. There we go. Next, motherboard. Okay. Zatharian says, it is open broadcast. You could code that in for them. That's true, I could if I could. But otherwise I couldn't, which I can't. Um. <laughs> All right. If somebody else wants to do that though, Feel free to be my guest. It would be a pretty handy little function there. All right, we've got three screws left for the motherboard. So I'm going bottom corner. Okay, there we go. I'm going, calling this like, like pool pockets, you know? I'm going top right corner. Then I'm going with a classic, okay? I'm going with the top of the PCI slots. Oh yeah. Realistically, that's enough. It's not going anywhere, you know, right? It's kind of held in by the IO shield over here and you got the, oh, it's a little bit of wiggle wobble there, but yeah, it should be fine. I don't have anything plugged into the bottom really. I got one thing plugged in the bottom. Ah, that'll hold it in. You know, put a card in here and that'll hold that down just fine. Just fine. Okay. Now we can start to really visualize how this loop is going to go together. Put the graphics card in. That is sweet. Get these fittings off here. These are the old fittings. Oh. Now, hmm, I think this is the inlet. I'm like 99% sure that's the inlet. Man, is it? Shoot, now I'm not sure. Crud, someone wanna look this up for me? Which one's the inlet and the outlet on the X570 Aqua? That would be pretty sweet. Thanks guys. Uh, okay, let's plan our loop order then. Or if anyone just wants to like look back at the beginning of the stream, it was right. Uh, oh shoot, also our front panel connectors, I never actually ran them. Fixed them, didn't run them. Um, that's fine, those can just go along down here. Yep, there we go. Come on, baby. You got this. There we go. Where's my other one? Where's my other one at? There it is. Cool. So those are going to run to right there. There we are. And then I'm just going to jam the remains under the mounting plate for the reservoir. I can kind of do that anytime. I don't really have to do that now, though. Oh, you know what? No, I am going to do it now because I'm going to be running tubing down there. And that's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to get at after then. Yeah, we can just jam those in there, run that right there, and we're good. Might as well connect them now then too. So power switch is um, that one right there, and then power LED, wait, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the reset switch first then. So, sorry guys, I guess you can't see very well, but 
reset switch, uh, hard drive LED. Sorry, I should say drive activity LED. It's not a hard drive anymore, right? Power switch and power LED. And theoretically, all four of them will work once I fire this thing back up. Very excited. Cool. So that's in there. We're calling that good enough cable management wise. The cable management in this build was never perfect. Okay. It's always been a rack mount system hidden away in a closet somewhere. So that's, I'm, I'm hiding behind that. I'm hiding behind that. All right. Let's go ahead and put a couple thumb screws in the graphics card. The one near the memory is outlet. CPU side in, memory side out. All right, thanks guys. Thanks, uh, Ntipion, Questgargon, and Z Jasper over in the uh, float plane chat. Thank you very much. I always trust float plane chat. One near the memory is outlet. Okay, so I did have it right. Good stuff. Okay. Oh, rats. Now I just got to remember how I had it configured over here, so this is out. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go out to in, to in, to out, to out. So this is coming out, and this one's gonna go right here. Now I wonder, are those about the same height? Boy, are they close. We might be able to cheat it a little bit just by kind of moving, like wiggling this a little bit, as long as it's not too high. And I don't think it is. Huh. Oh, that would be super cool if we could just do a nice, easy right angle right over there to the graphics card. Uh, that means all I need is a straight fitting. Where did my fittings go? There they are. Go ahead and just pop that on there. Got people asking, why is the PSU facing in? Ah, well, I'm glad you asked because of yet another design flaw in this case. Uh, it does not have the mounting holes to mount it the other way. Had, it had only two mounting holes for one of the ways. No mounting holes for the other way. Um, so we are stuck with, that was a weird noise, that was great. Well, we'll screw that in a little bit better. Uh, oh, okay, that was, that was really weird. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. I think that's just going to go straight there. And then this one is one that I was a bit worried about. So you can see here that the alignment is really weird between the outlet on the graphics card and the inlet on the CPU. So what I was kind of hoping was that I could overcome that with a right angle. It's not a perfect solution, but other than kind of coming out and going over and going over and going down like that, that would be horrible. Um, there's no sort of graceful way to do that. Ah. There we go. With just a tube. Ugh. Whew. Oh, man, you know, a right angle is pretty... It's kind of too tight, though. Just kind of... I'm having a look at it here, and I don't know... I don't know if I like that. See here. You guys check this out. So that's the, that's the inlet for the motherboard block, and then that's the outlet for the graphics card. You can see, um, kind of, there's so much glare. You can see how misaligned they are. So this would kind of come up here, and this would go down right around there. Um, on a more traditional motherboard, I think those would line up better, and it would be pretty close. But what I was kind of thinking was we could take a 45 off here and then try and get like a, like kind of a straight-ish shot to actually... Man, what would happen if we 45 both of them? That would be kind of a Christmas miracle if they lined up right, but it would certainly look a lot cleaner. Is that? Dang, that actually looks that actually looks pretty close. Could they could they just be a straight shot? Um Man. One way we can check, actually, is Let's see here. I could use some of my old soft tubing to just do like a like a sanity check on it. Let's just uh, yeah, just thread that in there. Yeah, a little bit easier to get at over here. 
Ah, come on. Yeah, sanity check would be good. Okay. So let's just, uh, here we go, grab another fitting. Because that would look super clean. Rod says do it. I'm not sure what he's telling me to just do it, though. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I didn't bring scissors over. Yeah, yet another thing I forgot. Gosh, darn it. I'm trying not to smoke my foot on the camera this time. Rod, you're going to have to clarify what you're telling me to do here. Or I might do something that we both regret. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So this would be the point to cut it if we were trying to do something like this. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and put that boy right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw that on there and see how it looks. Oh man, that is, that is tight to get on there. I'm going to have to get the length exactly perfect if I want to do this run for realsies with the hardline tubing, but might actually need the graphics card unscrewed. Mark Lane says, don't play pool, Linus. You spent $2 to send that as a super chat? What are you even talking about? <laughs> you super chatters. <laughs> These guys are just super. Okay. All right, let's put that on there. Okay, that's on. So now I'm gonna tighten this up and then I'll give you guys a look at what's shaking here. Rod says that 45 degree fitting setup is just as nice and easier than an offset bend. I think so too. I think it might actually work. Like, let's have a look here. All right, I'll show you guys. Uh, I'll show you guys in the, on the close-up cam here. I think it's pretty good, honestly. Here, I'm just going to cover this so it doesn't quit keep messing with the exposure. Obviously, the tube will be actually straight, but you can see here with a little bit of ah, an angling. Yeah, there we go. Ugh. They can, they can face each other basically straight. I like it. I like it. I think I'm going with it. All right, settled. So why don't we make that our first hardline run then? This is where I'm gonna decide if I'm actually gonna hardline or if I'm just gonna do like pseudo hardline like what you see here, like straight runs of traditional soft tubing. <laughs> Cause that, that is definitely tempting right about now. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have, uh... hold on, what else did Jake send? Oh, he sent way more fittings. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Oh, we could totally do it. Oh man, should I wuss out and go like Faco? Because here, check this out. Like this run right here, for example, over to the graphics card. We do one straight run here, and then one straight run here, and then a 90 degree, right? Right? Is that okay? Is that okay? I don't think you guys are gonna tell me it's okay. Luca Scorpion over on Floatplane says straight runs of soft tubing is fair enough. Huh? Huh? How many of these did he send? Thank you, Jake. You got my back. Oh, he sent a whole bunch of these. Oh, sick. There's like more 45s. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. <laughs> all Star <laughs> says not okay. Oh, man. The community is split. The community is super split on whether that's okay. Um, uh, you know what? Okay, okay. At the very least, at the very least, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it like hardline with cheats. Okay, so it'll be like a no actual bends hardline. It will look cleaner. Hardline tubing does look better. 
Oh, but soft tubing has that maintenance advantage. That's a really nice thing about it is when you need to move something around, it's got a little bit of flex without spilling all over you. And I definitely have fittings that are definitely the right size for the tubing that I have. Ooh, hold on a second. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's okay. Oh. Okay, all right, all right. Let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try. Okay, uh, hold on. First, we gotta plan our last run here. So this one I'm expecting to be super simple. We just throw our last 90 degree right here. There we go. And that one goes over to the outlet on the motherboard all in one block. We'll go ahead and throw some fittings on there. And we're in pretty good shape to make this a much, much nicer looking rig. That soft tubing, and it even like pressed against the top of the plexi on the top cover. Like it was, it was pretty, it was very late and Brandon and I were both very tired. That shoot was kind of a nightmare. That's the only reason that I ended up with that was because Brandon and I were tired and it was late. All right. Go ahead and put this puppy in. Hmm. The threads on this one seem a little off. I'm gonna try a different fitting to see if uh, maybe that's just a bit of an anomaly there because this one's recessed too. So it's kind of hard for me to, to get at it and I wanna make sure that I'm screwing it in tightly enough. Yeah, I think that was just a bit of an anomaly on the other one. There we go. Okay. There we go, let's tighten that down. Need maximum leverage. Mm. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think that's in there good enough. I'm just gonna give it a little tighty tighten. Awesome. Yeah, that's on. This one I have easy access to, so I'll just use that fitting for this. Oh, I'm actually pretty happy with how easily the planning portion of this went. I was expecting some more challenges, especially with this run right here. I didn't think these 45s would line up quite so nicely, but they really do. That's pretty lucky. Oh! Should definitely get some super chats going here. Uh, Ashton at 1 p.m. Oh, I wonder if you're still watching, Ashton. Uh, that, was, uh, that was three hours ago. Uh, Protocase customer service was terrible in trying to buy this case. Ended up not being able to. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that they didn't let you buy this case. They tried. Uh, I can tell you that they tried. I'm sorry they didn't reply to you. They should have. Um, but the reason that they wouldn't let you was because I told them no, because I didn't want people to um, get a broken case with, you know, sort of our name attached to it. I wasn't comfortable with it. Robert Mail says, there's a bucket. Okay, yeah, that was, that was three hours ago. Uh, Calvin says, any tips for a 20 year soon to be dad on balancing work life and creative side? Oh man, dude. Oh. <sighs> tough. Um, you know, try to, one of the big things for me is like trying to have them complement each other rather than thinking of them as separate. You know, one of the, one of the big breakthrough points for me and my wife, when we realized it's like, oh, you know, we talk about work so much was like, okay, maybe we stop thinking of it as work and stop thinking of that as a bad thing. Maybe we think of it as, uh, hey, that thing that we do together, that project, that we, that we run together. And then maybe it's okay to talk about it because you know, I think a lot of parents in particular and a lot of spouses who work with each other get kind of hung up on 
well, our personal life has to be separate from, from kids. Otherwise, you know, we're going we're gonna to turn 65, yeah. our kids are going to be moved out, and we're not going to know who each other are. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see it that way. I see it as, um, well, then what's wrong with that? That's something that you're doing together. That's a challenge that you guys are taking on together. So there's nothing wrong with just treating it like yet another challenge because there's always going to be some other challenge, whether it's a career change or uh, children or you know the, the passing of, uh, a of a beloved relative or, or whatever it is. You know, once you're married, you're doing everything together. That's how it works. Um, so learning to just kind of whatever it is, whether it's something that you're particularly enjoying at the moment or whether it's something that's not as enjoyable, you just have to get in that mindset that everything you do is a project that you're working on together. And then I think you, know, you might be one of those couples that goes into your first home renovation uh, or first family vacation with, with kids. It's, very, very, it's a very tough thing to do, actually, traveling with children. And you know, realizes, you know, hey, we got this, right? Because you're used to seeing things in that mindset. Uh, oh, I got to unfreeze that camera. Sorry about that, guys. One sec. Deactivate, reactivate. But um, hey, we good now? All right, cool. Sorry, guys. I was looking away from the chat because I was like, you know, working on my computer for a little bit there. Okay. I'm gonna let float plane chat tell me which one first. Which one first, guys? What run first? I really hope this is in there now. It really looks like it is. Okay, That's the one that makes me most nervous. If there's a leak there, basically got to tear down the whole thing. You guys aren't telling me anything. <laughs> Robinator says, just do straight runs of soft. Radiator, CP, okay, it's, it's, it's all random. Okay, it's not going to be helpful. All right, let's start with a challenging one. Let's do this run from the bottom of the rear radiator to the reservoir here. I want to have a quick look in the overhead cam and see how much of a straight run we're actually expecting this to be. Oh, wow, you know what? <gasps> I don't even have to do a bend. That's a straight run. Oh, oh, snap. It's like almost a complete straight shot. That is awesome. Uh, okay. Dang. This is going to be pie. That was one that I was kind of worried about because it's sort of tough. Just like getting it in there would be kind of tough. It'd be hard to turn this fitting and stuff. Oh, man. This is going to be so easy. I love this. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. And let's get some of our uh, hardline equipment here. Zetharian says, no, you must bend. No way. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be totally fine. Yeah, I'm not, even, I'm not even listening to you. I don't have to. I got this. I am doing the totally hacky hardline build. The cheat hardline build. All right. Get me some equipment here. I just need a little hold, holder thing. There it is. Um, there we go. And then I just need a little saw. If I recall correctly, this saw from the Alpha Cool kit is super junk-tastic. But uh, worst case scenario, I have a hacksaw out in my garage, and I will go get that. All right. Let's line this puppy up. Uh, oh, first thing. Oh, nope. I missed one tool that I need. Ah, this guy. This is really handy. So you use this to, sorry, everyone. Oh, oh, it's truly awful. All right, so you use that to uh, kind of smooth out the, uh, the outside so that it goes into the O-rings a little bit nicer. And then after you cut it, you use the other side of it to get the burrs out of the inside of the tubing. Uh, please mute Mike when you uh, make that sound. Uh, oh, some people are apparently having trouble with, uh, with YouTube. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. It says the connection's good. So if it's, if it's, if YouTube's down, um, YouTube's down, guys. 
Yeah. Oh, that's that's rough. YouTube itself dying. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep going on video platforms that are working right now, like Floatplane and Twitch. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna get this O-ring out so that we don't lose it. Whoop, whoop, there it is. Hey, hey, there it is, okay. Then we're gonna go ahead and pop that all the way in there and take this one out. Let's see if we can line up exactly how long this needs to be. It's not quite perfectly straight. I wish I could shove this over just like, man, like yeah, a hair, you know, like that much. Then it would be perfectly aligned but it's not enough to put like a spacer fitting or anything in here. There's just no real getting around it. You know what I could do, actually? Ooh, would this be wrong? Would this be really bad? I could use a bulkier 90 degree. Mm. Oh, that might just shove it over enough. Hold on a second, guys. I know that this is kind of a blingy over the top fitting, but Hold on, where's my other, uh, where's another right angle? Oh no, I can just detach this, fine. There we go. Okay. Oh, apparently it's YouTube US, not all of YouTube. Interesting. Ouch. Oh, that's awkward. Ah! Okay, let's see if that lines up perfectly now. Okay, I know that that's not a matching fitting, but if it helps this line up perfectly, like what's more important? A parallel run, oh, it does! What's more important, a parallel run or a matching fitting, guys? Come on guys, help me out. Parallel run or matching fitting? Oh, okay. Twitch seems to be very, very, uh, whew, very divided on this matter. Float plane, help me out, guys. Fitting, fitting, matching, fitting, both. Parallel run, parallel run. Oh, man, guys. Oh, man. Come on. Okay, tell me something, because I have one more. I have one more of those blingtastic right angles. What if I did it on both of the reservoir runs? Because I don't actually have any other right angles in the loop. Does that make it okay? Everyone wants me to straw pull this. Okay, all right, I'm giving you guys, I'm, I'm, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing the straw pull, okay? Hold on a second, let me, I need a minute though. I need a minute to create the straw pull, okay. Okay, how do um, black fittings with non-parallel run, okay? One silver fitting with parallel run, two silver fittings with parallel run, okay? Those are gonna be the options. Create pull. All right, I'm gonna drop this over in Float plane chat. All right, float plane chat, you guys are getting it first. Okay, there you go. Hit me up. Twitch chat, I'm dropping it on you guys right now. Okay. And uh, for anyone who is still managing to be alive over on YouTube there, which I have no idea if anyone is, uh, Hey guys, go ahead and go ahead and vote, all right? All right, let's have a look at these results here. Wow, okay. Landslide victory, landslide victory. Two right angles, two silver right angles and the parallel run. I think that's I think that's the best bet as well. Um, I don't know why Nick is calling me. There's nothing there's nothing I can do. Um Hey, you're on speaker. I can't do anything about YouTube being down. What's that? I cannot do anything about YouTube being down. No, I, I know. I just wanted to make sure you were aware it's like a platform thing, not a you thing. 
I am aware. Thank you. Thank okay. you very okay. much. Okay. That is very helpful. Okay, bye-bye. All right, thank you, sir. All right, yep, this is, this is a clear, clear victory. Cool. Well, I'm glad we all agree. All right, so this one, wait, this one was going to be, uh, I did have a right, oh yeah, I'm holding a right angle because that's what I'm replacing, I'm replacing a right angle, here we go. Wow, y'all witnessed it here, YouTube just apparently completely crapped itself, crazy. Look at that. Dave says, YouTube down, I am here now. How do you like the video quality? Is it good enough for you? Oh, I'm like real excited about these parallel runs that we're gonna have going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, okay. I'm also real excited about not having to do any bends because I get to just cheat this hardcore. We might do one bend. We might do one bend just for fun. All right. So let's line this puppy up right there to right there. Oh, oh, it's parallel. It's parallel. It's beautiful. You guys can't tell from the angle you're looking at it, but it's, it's great. It's grand and you're going to love it. Okay. So how deep into the fitting does it go? It goes about there. So we need to go right about there. I unfortunately did not grab a Sharpie marker, but I'm not going to leave for that at this point. I think I'm just going to put it in, in exactly the right spot, and then mark it with the saw. There we go. All right, let's cut a tube, shall we? Oh, we're going to be done in no time, ladies and gentlemen. In no time. Okay, mic muted. I'm replacing this horrible saw. One moment. I'm just going to go get, even my dull, ancient hacksaw blade is going to be better than that stupid thing. Alex has the best technique for this, though. He just cuts them to, like, kind of half an inch longer than they need to be, and then just goes at it with the, um, with the belt sander. It's great. You just kind of shave it down with the belt sander little by little and then deburr it, and it's, like, perfect. Look, I'm on valve time, whoever is giving me a hard time about my time estimates over there. Come on, baby. Ah! <laughs> the teeth. They are stuck. I know you're not supposed to cut on the back stroke, but I don't care anymore. Yeah. We threw. Oh, and I forgot to mute. It just shattered it. Well, that was unfortunate. Okay. Try that again. Oh boy. Um, guess I went at it a little hard. Okay. Round two, fight.
Uh, this tubing seems really brittle. I'm a little uneasy about it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to have to really take my time with this thing. Can I? Oh, shoot. All right. Man, normally when I'm the one making the noise, I don't mind it that much. But jeez, that is horrible. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Oh, so easy. Man, if only everything in life was as easy as this run right here. Here, give me a sec here, guys. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, straight AF. I am super stoked right now. It's great. Um, yeah, we've got someone, uh, Nato Nathan says, my, my YouTube stream is fine, it's just the site that's down. Yeah, there's 6,500 people still watching on YouTube as far as I can tell. So it's just some kind of weird, derpy thing going on. All right, so I'll throw an O-ring on here. Throw a fitting on there. Wait, <laughs> well, let's throw a fitting on there. Throw an O-ring on there. Just make sure there's no plastic shards left there. Yeah, seems good. Okay. Okay. So you all remember this too, right? If this thing leaks, Rod Rosenberg of Washington State, okay? <laughs> He's the one to blame, okay? I know who to blame. Rod Rosenberg. Okay. Apparently YouTube's back. All right, cool. Okay. Ah, it's tight. That's tight. One run down, just like that. Let's do another one, shall we? That was effortless. I love it. So maybe we can use this piece of tubing that uh, otherwise would just be scrap. Actually, we can. Look at that, very easily. So let's take this one out, make sure the O-ring. Oh, yeah, no, that's probably where that extra O-ring came from. The last thing you want to do is run hardline with no O-rings. That's a bad time. Okay. There we go. So we could use this to make our way over to this one right here. And I'm going to cheat. Or should I cheat? Should we do at least one bend? What do you think? One bend? Oh, Tarfi101 says, my YouTube sub box is back, but it's showing five-day-old videos. Oh, good. 
Oh man, I hope they didn't lose data. That would <laughs> that would really suck. <laughs> Just like casually lose a bunch of uploads. Honestly, it's kind of impressive that it's never happened. Oh, rings are for no bends, bends, let's draw pull it. Okay, you know what? Let's let's do it. Let's let's draw pull it again, okay? You guys seem to like these straw pulls so much. We're letting you guys determine how to water cool the system. Do a bend? Yes. No. All right. I'm hitting. I'm hitting float plane with it first here. Here it comes, guys. Try not to spam chat too much so people can see it. I'm hitting Twitch with it. I would tell you guys not to spam, but you're Twitch. You're gonna do whatever you do. You guys are my, you're my Twitch bros, all right? And then now I'm hitting YouTube with it. For anyone who is, I, I, the chat seems to be broken on YouTube. I should do a couple of those super chats just in case those guys are still watching. Now I feel bad, there were a couple of really big ones. Uh, Christian says, here's a couple bucks to fix your audio issues. Sent a hundred dollars, wow. Uh, okay, and, ooh, oh, it just reloaded and I lost a bunch of stuff. Um, Brian says, can send resume, something, something. I need work. Uh, well, yeah, you would have to send a resume. Um, I know this is unorthodox, but I'm an avid believer that a hot dog is not a sandwich. Well, no, of course a hot dog is not a sandwich, Brian. We're on the same page here. We're on the same team. Uh, thanks to the real smiley. Can you shout out my son, Gavin? Sup, Gavin? You might have missed this by now, but uh, hey, there you go. Doing my best up in here. All right, do a bend. Let's have a look at these results here. Yes, has 70% of the vote. Okay, fine. We're doing a bend. Um, if we're gonna do one, okay, we're gonna have to use this for this then, I guess. If we're gonna do one, I think this is probably the, this is probably the easiest one right here. So that's the one I'm going to do. I'm going to do the easiest possible one. So it's got to be about that long. Plus, okay, so hold on a second. Where's the, where's the point here? So it's going to be uh, kind of there. Okay, and then it's got to be like that long again. You know what? I could use a measuring tape right about now. Did I bring one? Please tell me I brought a measuring tape. Dag nab it. I was hoping to just kind of eyeball this. Wait, so sorry, how long? How long is it gonna be? About like that long, plus about, oh yeah, we can do it that way, that, that works. Okay, so about that long, plus some change. Okay, so let's cut it right here. Right here. Three bends on the same tube, uh-uh. Uh-uh, no way, no how. Ain't happening. I'm muting you guys on purpose.
That noise is truly awful. Real, real awful. I think this tubing kind of went a little bit bad in storage. Bad tubing. Okay, so right around there, let's go ahead and let's lube up our thing here. gonna, oh shoot, where'd I put the, oh there. There we go. Swampy, swampy, swamp. All right, where's my heat gun at? I'm going freehand, ladies and gentlemen. Going freehand. Uh, where is the heat gun? Ah, there it is. Okay. This is one thing I did think of heat gun is on a different circuit than everything else that's going on here today. So we shouldn't have any issues with that. Power. Shoot, I don't really have anywhere to put it. I mean, there's okay, I guess. Sure, yeah, that'll do. All right, we're just gonna let that heat up. Ooh, nice. Nice. Um, the UPS company says that they don't mind the wooden blocks that we put it on to lift it up a little bit to get the armored cable into it. So they're good to go ahead and come and tell us it's ready to go. Why don't you have a heat gun stand? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't use it very often. So like, that's why, I guess. All right, right there. That's the apex of our bend. Right there, okay? It's like a legendary, legendary apex. Uh, I should probably mark it in some way. The problem is that, see what you run into is when you sharpie these things, it doesn't come off a lot of the time, like you kind of bake it on with the heat gun. So what's a smart way to, to do that? If Rod's still watching that, he would be someone that I, uh... you know what? I could just go with a pencil. Yeah, Twitch chat says pencil. Uh... Yeah, pencil could work. Let's go pencil. I happen to have lots of pencils behind me. A member of the Pencil 15 Club. Okay. Rod says tape. I'm okay with, oh yeah, pencil? Is that gonna bake on too? Rod says tape. Eh. <laughs> Warnemont says just be a Chad and eyeball it. You know what? I'm going to put the ever so lightest pencil mark on it. Why did I take that out? I need that. That is highly necessary right now. Let's see if I can even find that pencil mark anymore. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All right. We're raw dogging it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 90 degree bend. Saw it here first. Well, not first so much as eventually, you know? Yeah, right there, right there. Okay, it's starting to loosen a little bit there. You gotta kind of heat it up around the sides of it too. Okay. Yep, 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 okay. And a one and a two and a 90 degrees. Da, 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 da. Okay, that looks like 90. I'm gonna overdo it just a touch. What do you guys think? Is that a 90? Are we 90 enough? Oh, we got a slight wrinkle. We wrinkled it. 
Dang it. We wrinkled it. It's a bad job. Check that out. Got a bit of a, yep, got a wrinkle there. There's a fly in the ointment. That's a shame. Well, I knew this was a bad idea. I blame you guys. Now we're stuck with it. Way to go. Because I'm not changing it now. So that's it. It's done. All right. Let's go ahead and take about, yeah, about that much off here. That's it, we're done with you. You're done. You're out, heat gun. Had enough. I think I probably didn't heat it up enough. Rod says, where's Jay's two cents when we need him? Reheat and do it again. No, I'm not gonna reheat it and do it again. I'm done, I'm out. I'm cheating. Cliff says, shoulda done no bend. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. All right, I'm muting you guys. All right, we're back. Guys, when I say I'm muting you, you don't need to say that it's muted. I know. What's up? Uh, oh, I really don't know if you can help with this one. I barely know what I'm doing with this one. Yeah, you can watch if you want. Oh man, this is still a little bit high here. Oh, and of course that camera's frozen again. Uh, well, they're messaging all kinds of different things. Uh, well, I don't know. They got nothing better to do. Can they hear you? Uh, yeah, they can hear me. Okay, so we need to go. Uh, I gotta cut it again. I wasn't even like I wasn't even close. Okay, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm muting you again. Yep, nasty, nasty noise. All right, here we go. Okay, we're getting closer. Oh man, that is really, it's still above it. Uh, I wish I had a belt sander. Do I have anything belt sander equivalent? Anything that spins fast that I could use for this? Hmm. That would be super cool if I had that. Um, 
Do you have anything like that? I kind of doubt it. You know. Well, the problem is that I don't have one here. Um, orbital sander. Yeah, I don't think I have an orbital sander either. You know what, guys? I'm going to BRB. I'm going to go look in my garage and see if there's any tools that I might be forgetting about. Um, saw a couple people talking about Dremels. I could just use a rotary cutter on the Dremel, I guess. I've got one of those stupid little like mouse sander things from like Black and Decker. It's not, I don't think it's going to be useful for this. You know what? I think we're just going to go Dremel tool. Yeah, Dremel tool it is. Okay. Here we go. Put that on, kiddo. Yep. I just cannot do this with the handsaw. It's really stupid. No, no, I'm going to do it, but with a different tool. <laughs> Good try, though. Because you're going to be nearby, I thought. So just because you're not operating the tool doesn't mean that uh, you can't get something in your eye. Hold on. Can you do me a favor and cover that bucket of uh, dirty water? I don't want Kitty drinking that. She's getting hit. Dash, you get out of here. All right. There's my tube. There's my power cord. I should have known that this stream was going to take longer. I budgeted three hours for this. How long have I been live? Four hours. And we are, whew, we are not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. We are not done. Okay, that sounds good. Why don't you do that? Um, where did I put my glasses? Gosh darn it. Oh, there they are. Okay. Huh. So let's have a look. How close are we here? We are not close. So, oh, now the cat's getting out of here. All right, we're freehanding it. It doesn't fit in my tubing thing anymore. Wait, maybe it does. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Goodbye, complete waste of time. Hello, melted plastic. Wonderful. Okay. Try this one now. Okay, that's getting pretty close. So we're gonna go ahead and try and get the other side, the other side in here. Oh yeah, that's real close. Um, no, I wouldn't say, or I'm gonna make a loud noise again, yeah. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna use the Dremel again. <coughs> it's too loud, all right. So much better. I'm so happy right now. I'm eating you guys. Now we're back. Okay. 
Let's have a look here, guys. See if it fits. If it doesn't, I give up. No, I'm kidding. I still got a little bit more gas in the tank. Um, oh, shoot. That is still way too long. Okay, let's cut it again. That's fine. This is part of the process. Ah, it's got plastic in my mouth. That's okay. That's part of the process, too. to get the little burrs off of it. <coughs> yeah. Oh, sorry guys, I forgot to mute you. Sorry, sorry, it's got people calling that ASMR. Uh, no, no, that is the, that is the not, not the, the no. <laughs> okay, all right, let's have a look here. So I'm gonna switch over to the webcam. Uh, let's see how close we got this. Looks like it's a little bit off and a little bit off. Yeah, it seems to be off kind of on both counts right now. Um, oh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, there's your problem. So it's too too long. That's fine. We can shorten it a little bit. We have that power. <clears throat> um, okay, so center to center, maybe like that much. Last thing I want to do is go too far at this point. That would be pretty rough. You know, it's funny, I remember as a kid feeling exactly the same way about my dad using power tools. I think we get conditioned to not mind the sound of power tools because it's so much better than the alternative. It's like that or, you know, slaving away with a saw for an hour. It's like, yeah, power tools are not that bad. Which? Hmm? Are those, are those for carrying water? You betcha. Better believe it, kiddo. That is still too long. Oh. Actually, maybe not. Hold on. Let's have a look here. Um, no. That. Oh, wow. I think we nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, indeed. Here, let's have a look here. Check this out, guys. <clears throat> that looks to be coming pretty well straight up and pretty well straight out and 90 degrees down. Looks pretty good to me. I think we got it. Yay. Okay. Let's go ahead and put some fittings on. Can I help with this part? Sure. You can help. Put this O-ring on the tube. Oh, no! Huh? no! I'm just kidding. It's fine. Okay, good job. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Put this on. Now put this on. Good. Okay. Now I'll switch to the overhead. <clears throat> Here we go. Now that goes on there. That goes on there, that goes on there, and we tighten that boy down. All right. Okay. Oh. Nice. Tighten it down, tighten it down. Oh, not bad. 
Not bad. What do you think? Does that look better than the uh, the like the the floppy tubing like this? Do you think so? The hard lines? Yeah. Yeah. You think it's worth the extra work though? You know, got to use power tools and stuff. This you can just cut with scissors. It's easy. All right. Um, I am willing to. I am willing to entertain doing this one as a bend as well. What do you think? Should we cheat? That's where we take this, we heat it up, and we bend it like this. Or we can cheat, and we can use two straight pieces and a right angle fitting that looks a little something like this. There you go. See, like that? Yeah. We can just use that to change the direction. Cheat. You want to cheat? Yeah. And not bend? Actually bend. Actually bend. Well, that's how it's going to be, I guess. You know what? I'm letting, I'm letting the kid pick. I'm letting the kid pick this time. So we're going to need another piece of tubing then, that's for sure. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to try and eyeball my distance a little bit better this time. I think I can do. I think I can do a bit better than I did last time. That was a lot of cutting after the fact. All right, I've got my O-rings, my collars. Put those over there. There we go. All right. So this boy is going to go right about there. Okay, so we're going to compensate just a little bit. Where's my pencil? There it is. Okay, so we go over doing it just a little. And then from that point to here, it's going to be right around, right around there. All right, so we're going to cut it first. Oh, no. No scissors, kiddo. You got your glasses on, right? Okay, good. Okay, if we're gonna freehand bend, we might as well freehand cut, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Float plane chat is currently uh, running bets on how many cuts it's going to take me, apparently. Thank you for the confidence, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so that's there, right around there. That's my bend. Wait a minute. Did I run this long enough? Oh, shoot. I don't think I... Uh-oh. I don't think I cut it long enough. How did I manage that? I don't know. It was a rhetorical question, sir. You know what a rhetorical question means? Yeah. It means a question that you don't actually expect or particularly want anyone to answer. Oh, shoot. Hold on, we might be saved if it's a little bit this way. Oh, man! I done goofed. Yeah, I think I goofed. The good news is that this is still long enough if we cheat. All right, well, you know, we'll give it a shot. No, because if we do that, then we will definitely not be able to use this. How much tubing do I have left? Where'd it go? Oh, here. I have enough to try again.
No cheating. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Oh, shoot, my heat gun's not plugged in anymore. There's a lot of plastic, melted plastic on this uh, cutting disc. I might replace that if I have to cut more tubes, which means I might replace that because I will definitely need to cut more tubes. All right, I'm just going to chuck that right there. No prob, Bob. Shoot, how did I manage to cut this too short? That sucks. Sucks. Okay, where's my uh, floppy doodle? Can you pass me the floppy doodle right there? Thanks, kiddo. All right. <clears throat> All right. Where'd my mark go? Not that it's useful. Gosh darn it, where's that mark? Uh, it was another rhetorical question actually, but yes, you're more than welcome to look at it. I don't see it. Maybe I should you're, you're gonna discover that your dad asks a lot of rhetorical questions. Ah, there it is. All right. Well, here we go, guys. 90 degrees time. Try our best. That one seems like it wasn't there. Uh, we have to do it again, basically. A bendy one of what now? Yes, the suspenders. Um, Instead of straps. Uh, how come? I, oh man, I am definitely doing something wrong on those uh, wrinkles. This is so wrinkled that I think I would have had to redo it again anyway. That is a real crying shame. Here, I'll get you guys a better look at that with the webcam. That's awful. See, ew, ew. no one wants to look at that anymore. Am I not heating it up enough? I think I'm probably not heating it up enough. Yeah. Many wrinkles, much wrinkles. Wider area on the tube. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Rod. Fortunately, this one was probably discard anyway, but now we know. Oh, was it long enough? Oh, it might have been, actually. Look at that. Uh, you guys can't really see that, unfortunately. I'm going to move my heat gun. Uh, my tubing cutting holder thing in my boober. There you go. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have been perfect, but we might have been able to get away with that if it was actually bent 90 degrees properly, right? Ah, oh, yeah, you really can't do that. Eh? You gotta heat that up to bend it. Kind of tempted to put it in there just to mess with you guys. Because it's like actually the right size is really unfortunate. Ah. Frustrating. Like nailed it other than just totally screwing up the bend. Yeah, wider area. Okay. All right. Fine. Let's do it again. Yep, we're back to cutting again. Oh man. Oh man, indeed. 
Oh man. Okay, so it's right about there. Yeah, I will do the pencil marks correctly. I, you know, I, it's not like I'm not trying to do the pencil marks correctly. Yeah, punt. Okay, so I cut it right about there. Okay. See ya, heat gun. Nice knowing ya. Dremel, you're up. Well, they're better than nothing. No, they're about the same size. Just my head's bigger. My main problem with hardline is My main problem with hardline is in between every time I've done it, there's usually been anywhere between six months and a year. So all these little things like that are kind of by feel, I tend to forget because I don't really care because for 99% of what I do, I prefer soft line tubing. It's just easier to do maintenance on. Um, not to mention easier to build in the first place. Oh, sorry, I'll mute you guys for a sec. All right, bendy time, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> Float plane's going after me. Please just bend it first. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I overcompensated on the length a little bit. It should be fine. Like here, hold on. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. You guys see it's going to be fine. See, this time I got tons of extra length. See? Yeah, we're more than we more than good. We're more than good. It's fine. Uh, where's my mark? Come on, Mark. Rhetorical question again, kiddo. Um well, part of it is that I have an audience right now. I don't normally actually just randomly talk to myself that much. Um, so that's one reason. Is there another reason? Um, it kind of can help you focus, you know? Mm -hmm. Thinking out loud. Well, just people in general. I think that's it. Where's yep. That's my spot right there. Okay, so, all right. Yep, that's lots. Okay, here we go. Let's heat this up. Well, well we're gonna need we're gonna need to plug it in. Step one. Mm. All right, turn the fan up a little bit so we can heat up more of it at a time. some water. Oh, shoot. Looks like that uh, camera broke again. There we go. Okay. I need water so that I can put the floppy doodle into it. Now, where'd that thing go? There it is. The squishy ones? Oh, no, this is, um, 
This is like a silicone tube that you put inside to make sure that when you bend it, it doesn't kink and that restricts the water flow. All right, here we go. Not ready yet. Not cooked enough. We're definitely going wider this time, guys. All right, we're going wider. It's not ready. Still not cooked. It's bendy. It's getting bendy. Just got a flambe, you know? Okay, we're almost there. Almost there. All right, here we go. Okay, got to overbend it a little bit. So that it relaxes into a nice, perfect 90 degree. Whew. Um, yeah, yeah, it's off. It's just, uh, it has like a cool down function, but I don't care about that right now because I need to plug in my Dremel. Just make sure you don't touch that thing because it is super, super hot. All right. Wow. Well, thank you, Rod, for the tech tip because that is spectacular. Look at that. How not wrinkled is that? It's like perfect. Look at that. What you like there? Jesus. Look at that. Nailed it. All right. And that is about as perfect 90 degree as I think it gets freehand. Look at that. That is some 90 degree action right there. All right, clearly we do need to make a cut or two though, because that's my fitting and that's my tubing. But that's fine. Hmm, I was trying to think which way I want to go first. I guess this one first. Yeah, we'll do the long one first. So let me have a look here. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, if I do this one first, then I can kind of play around with this movement. Um, and get the length just right. So, okay, where's my perfect 90? I gotta go about, uh, about, you know, yay far. Let's start with just a, just a little shorty short cut. I'm gonna put a new cutting disc on so that I don't have to kind of hold it at an angle like this when I'm cutting. See, you can't really get a nice straight line, so let me just change out this cutting disc real quick. Uh, you can't clean it because the cutting disc actually wears away. That's part of its function. It sure is. Because it's better for the cutting disc to wear away than for it to, uh, you know, shatter and go flying and hit you in the eye. It's also better for the um, cutting disc to wear away than for it to, um, well, yeah, for, no, pretty much that. No, it's not going to hit you, kid. <laughs> you found something blue down there. Well, don't eat it. Then it's probably part of a tube. <laughs> Kids. There's something. I recommend them. You want any? I got three. I bet if we didn't have them anymore, it'd probably be okay. What do you think? Should we sell you? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Someone else might really want you, though. No. <laughs> Shoot, this is seized on here real good.
Hmm. Rats. I may not be able to change my cutting disc. Mm. Wow, that is on there real good. What is going on here? No, I think what really happened is it kind of tightened itself on. Um, okay, fortunately, I think I've got... Yeah, it's, it's it's turning in the chuck, unfortunately. So I don't know if I have an obvious way to fix this. If I just... Yeah, I just can't... Man, I can't tighten it enough to... to hold it tightly enough that it won't spin when I'm trying to... Uh... Oh, wait. Hey, got it. Nice. Okay. Just had to crank it even more. Wow, that's... Yeah, it's really tight. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this new cutting disc on. Can't believe I screwed up that tube when I got the length. So perfect on that first one for this bend. Dang it. All right, that's on there. Go ahead and loosen that up a bit. There we go. Oh. There we go. All right, we're ready. Uh, which one's a good one? There it is. Oh, wow, you know what? I could totally totally cheat this. I can just use my perfect length tube to know how much I should take off of my perfect bend tube. I should make sure this is the perfect length before I do that. It's not quite. Yeah, it's close, but not quite. That side's a little short. Okay. Cool. This side is perfect, though. Uh, all right, so let's let's mark it. Should I gamble? I'm gambling. I'm gambling, ladies and gentlemen. Where's my pencil at? Okay, just gonna kind of prop it up on something flat. We're gonna assume our radiator is pretty flat, and we're gonna mark that puppy. Okay. Here it goes. Where'd my tubing holder go? I'm gonna use the tubing holder. Oh man, now that I've got a full-size cutting disc too, I can just go right across that thing. Ow, that's hot. That touched my arm. That is melted plastic. That is hot. All right. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, it fits pretty well, yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and... Okay, so our worst case scenario. Wait, well, we would never see that. Well, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's go worst case scenario is right there. Where's my pencil at? Um, yeah, so right there. Okay, I'm gonna cut that one off. Well, I said I was done for now. Oh, yeah, there we go.
All right. <laughs> that goes there. That goes there. Oh, wow. It sure is a good thing we didn't take off any more than we had to. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, no. We're good. We're good. Um, okay. Yeah, because this is, this is bending out now. And I could actually bring it in to be at exactly the same height, right, like that. And that's probably what I want to do. Also, this is where the graphics card is actually going to screw in. So, yeah, we got to take just a, just a smidgen off. Let's take off a smidge. One metric smidge. Bye. Bye. Okay, smidge is gone. Okay. Yeah, we're ready to test it. Theoretically, we've got a good cut here. Just one. And I think it works. I think we're good. That's it. Nailed it. Check that out. Nice and parallel. Next, this time, can I help you assist too, please? Uh, hold on. I got to check one thing real quick because it is still going out instead of in. But if I don't have to change that, I'm not going to. I just want to see if once the fitting's in place, if it's going to stay parallel because it will be a little bit wider. But as long as it still looks good to the eye, then I'm going to call that good enough. Actually, what if I'm going to test it just with the lensing that you did with? Oh, uh, absolutely. What happens if it just happens? Then we in trouble, boy. Well, that, that just happened. well nobody does. Actually, I'm sure someone out there is rooting against me. <laughs> All right, we're good. Nice. Nice. Okay. I found a tall tube. You found a tall tube? Oh, I actually don't need that. I'm going to use one of the uh, little scrap bits. Uh, like this one that I broke earlier, because our last run only goes from here to here. It's a super short one. All right. I think I beat even the most optimistic estimates for how many cuts I would need to do over on float plane there. This is looking, if I do say so myself, pretty fine, actually. I just needed that. One reminder from Rod, like, hey, you should probably not totally derp your, uh, derp your bends. And like, dang. Aw, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Very, very parallel. Everything is, like, pretty clean. Now all I can see is that stupid wrinkle on this one. Dang it. It's the... That's the problem with, but man, that second one, thank you, Rod, great tip, is just absolutely perfect. Very happy with that one, that second 90 degree. All right, so let's find our shortest scrap. This looks like the shortest scrap. Um, and then all we need to do is this one last run right here, and then we're ready to fill it. Yay, indeed. Wait, will this fill, actually fill it, what will the tubes do? Uh, what do you think they'll do? I think it will make them go through the tubes and then go down and just keep going again. Yeah, pretty much. What does that do, though? What do you think? What do you think the water does in here? I don't know. I'm not cutting it down as big as I can, but hopefully I can use this. You better believe it, kiddo.
All right. Ow. Okay, let's see how close we got this one. I'm not even, I'm not even trying to nail this one on the first go. Oh wow, yeah, it's, oh that is. What even was I looking at? I, I don't, I honestly don't know. Okay, let's let's try to actually get this one this time. That that was like I got to take off that much more here. Okay. Yeah, that was not good measuring. You know, my dad always told me, measure six times, cut seven. What's that? Uh, that means that you, um, you know, you you make it too long and then you just keep taking off a little bit at a time. Oh. Yeah, and my dad never told me that. You like that noise? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes that noise. That is a that is a strange thing. Oh man, I cannot stand it. I think it's awful. <laughs> I don't know how anyone can like that noise. Um, oh, I would not describe it as mouse-like. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to see if... Uh, oh yeah, YouTube chat is back and like YouTube seems to be like straight up back. We've got 11,000 viewers over there right now. Hey, sup YouTube? Welcome back, yo! How is this still so far off? It's not even close. I measured it. I swear to you guys, I measured this. Look at this. It's like, it's way too big. Ugh, okay, well. You wanna help me cut this time? Since you go from not even wanting to hear the power tools to wanting to operate them? Um, I'm afraid that's gonna be a hard no on operating the Dremel, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, kiddo. Uh, I will find something for you to operate. You can pretty easily rough up your hands pretty bad with a Dremel tool. I think it'd be hard to take a finger clean off with uh, one of those cutting discs, but... but you definitely would have a very, very bad time if you accidentally slipped. All right, here we go. This is it, I'm going for it, guys. Oh yeah. What do you think, does that fit? I think so. Basically, flawlessly, check this out, guys, check this out. That's how much wiggle there is. See that wiggle? Oh wait, you can't, that's just my finger slipping. See that? No wiggle. Perfect. I love it. Now we just pop that off there. Pop these collars on. They're called things. They're called collars. They're called things. They're called fitting collars. Why are they called things? Well, you can want it as much as you want, but unfortunately it doesn't change anything. It's a hard lesson, but you gotta learn it. The sooner is better. I oh, wish it worked that way, but it don't. Okay. Tighten that on. Oh, tighten that on. Ooh. And that is on. Okay. Oops. Oh. Okay, just crushed a piece of tubing. Neat. 
Yeah, but that was too short. All right, let's put some um, boot SSD in. Oh, you know what? It's probably, I'm gonna use the, hmm. So am I, you wanna put this in? Yeah. Yeah, sure, you can put that in if you want. Go around the other side. I was thinking of upgrading. I brought home the eight terabyte one. Um, but maybe I'll do a separate video just like about that SSD. I don't feel like um, cloning over my OS or anything right now. Okay, here you go, kiddo. So we've got two options, and I'll let you I'll let you pick which one, okay? I'll make that up to you. Oh man, that's like freaking perfect up in there. Uh, okay. So this slot right here shares bandwidth with this slot. So this is a 16x slot, which means that they will split, they will bifurcate, and this will be 8x and this will be 8x. So if we install our SSD in this slot, what happens is we cut half of our bandwidth to our graphics card. Do you remember what the graphics card does? What's it that for? It stores memory. Mm, try again. What's the video card do? Um, like you said it can do videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, videos. Uh, what else do you think the graphics card does? What do you need it for? Make the game work. Okay, yeah, that's good. You're kind of guessing right now, though. Okay, maybe you don't remember that part. That's fine. So this is for games. Okay. This makes your games go fast. Okay, so that will cut our bandwidth to the thing that makes our games go fast, which might not matter that much, because 8x PCI Express Gen 3 is actually plenty fast for most modern graphics cards, including this one even. All right. But some people are purists, and they don't like splitting that bandwidth. Option number two. We can install our SSD in this one, which doesn't share bandwidth, but has the drawback of running off of the chipset rather than directly off the CPU. So there's another latency jump there. What does the chipset do? The chipset acts as a communication hub between the CPU and everything plugged into the system. Communication? Yeah. Um. But it means that there's a relay. So you kind of think of it like playing telephone takes a little bit longer to get the message when we go to this one. You like that one? You prefer games going fast? Yeah, okay. So watch out where you're installing it, it's got to come all the way to the back here before you press it down. There you go. You don't need the safety glasses anymore. There you go. Those are kind of in your way. Make sure you got it lined up with the slot. You can look through here if you need to see it. Is it lined up? Yeah. Okay, then push down evenly on both sides. Two hands. Push down. Great. Now what you need to do is, you know that little uh, chest upstairs? that has the plastic clear drawers in it. I think it's in the side room right now. Okay, so inside either, I think it's the second from the top drawer, there's a little black box about this big, cardboard box full of screws. I need you to get those screws and bring them back here. It's in the side room? Yep, side room. All right, kiddo. How did I never notice this? Holy crap, you guys. Check this out. I had my graphics card installed with one of my outputs covered. There's a display port out in there. I, uh, the motherboard I had last time I did an update here, um, that's hilarious. Uh, the motherboard I was using last time had the PCIe 16X slot in the very top. And so I, I moved it down a slot when I put this board in and I just must have not realized. I mean, I only use one output so it didn't, it didn't matter, it didn't affect me, but I'm gonna fix it now. That is pretty derp. Hilarious. All right, so let's pull this puppy out. Okay. Uh, that drawer doesn't open all the way. Well, it doesn't need to open all the way. It just needs to open enough to get the uh, the black box out. I can't. I think that that's like too Are you sure? Yes. I am willing to bet that it is not that hard to get at and that you are a pretty smart kid who can figure this out. What do you think? 
You think you can figure it out? You go figure it out. Oh, uh, hey, darling. I think you might need to grab a stool and wash your hands in the bathroom. Because there's too much stuff piled up on that couch right now. I don't think that's a very good idea. Okay, off you go. All right. All right, there we go. Got that all fixed. Um, yeah, ask your sister, please. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm just going to close the door here. Ugh. Okay. Ouch. Okay, all fixed. Actually, I opened up all of them because I think in that same, uh, that same container my son's bringing me back, I've got some much nicer looking PCI covers. So I'm gonna swap those in as well. Okay, can you close that door, please? See, I knew you could find it. He often does this where he comes back saying something cannot be done. And then I say, you know what? I think you're a pretty smart kid and I bet you can figure it out. And then three minutes later, oh, sorry, darling. Um, I don't think there's anything that you can help me with. And normally I would try and find a way for you to help me, but unfortunately there's too much dangerous stuff around here right now. And I just can't have, um, I just can't have my girls here right now, unfortunately. Off you go, darling. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It's a rough, uh, it's a rough life. You got a, it's a battle. Think of it as a battle scar. Uh, unfortunately, the PCI covers that I was hoping were gonna come back are not here. Okay, don't stand in the way of the camera though. Hmm, and I think I am one. Oh, no, I got it. These are kind of a sentimental thing. So now that I don't use, you gotta, you gotta move because the autofocus is picking you up, kiddo. Uh, now that I don't use the radiator for my first water-cooled system, the one thing left is these aluminum Antec thumb screws. So these are from my old P160W case. And I have kept them with me and carried them forward through my builds because they were from my, like, my first enthusiast-grade case. Oh, shoot. I actually think I'm still one short. I've only got seven. I definitely have more of them somewhere. It's just a matter of like, finding one and grabbing it. So we'll call that, uh, we'll call that good enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. Uh, I do see that. Um, no. I'm going to go with a hard no on the magic there. Okay, wow, we are doing awesome here, guys. And all it took was most of the day. Sick. So I've got, oh yeah, it did. Thank you for that. All right, I know you got my back, right? All right. Um, Excuse me, I'm just gonna plug in this front USB too. Okay, there we are. Uh, that other one doesn't really plug in because this only has one USB 2 header, but that's okay. I was gonna get one of those USB 3 to USB 2 header adapters, but I forgot, so I will do that some other time. There's nothing, there's nothing about that that absolutely would need to be done today anyway. Uh, no, sorry. Why? Because there isn't enough room. But there's that tiny chair. Uh, I know whose chair it is, but there is not enough room. Sorry, kiddo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's time to 
uh, wire this thing up. Can I sneak past you here? Oh, let's put in some cables. Here we go. Okay. Uh, you want to help put cables in? Uh, possibly, actually. Do you? Okay. Um, all right, fine. So here, go ahead. You can do... I thought you said you know how to do it. Uh, okay. Well. Um, oh man, you know what? No, I'm going to plug it in because I am getting to the point where I'm actually kind of hungry <laughs> and I really want this computer done. So, uh, no. Under normal circumstances, yes. Right now, no. Sorry. Why don't you actually run off and get a snack? You've got to be hungry at this point. You ate lunch? Oh, I didn't get lunch. All right. Been streaming since lunchtime. All right, PCI Express goes right there. Okay. More PCI Express. Uh, okay, that's our 8-pin CPU power connector. Looks like I had it... Which way did I have it in here? Looks like I had it in right there. Mm, yep. Yeah. Right there. And right there. Nope. Nope. Right there and right there, apparently? That's kind of weird. Why would I run it like that? That's kind of stupid. Well... I don't always make the best decisions. Okay, let's wedge that down there. There we go. That's a little bit better. Cool. Cool! Then we've got another PCI Express 6 plus 2. Go ahead and run that bad boy right there. You want to help test it? Um, well, there's not a lot of testing that needs to be done for this one, to be perfectly honest with you. This is just my computer, so as long as it turns on, it's already, it's already tested. It's already working. All right, I no longer need this SATA cable because I have gone PCI Express. And... Oh, the monitor is right over there. But we're probably not going to hook it up to a monitor, but I would do instead is just um, no uh, I would hook it up to a capture card all right so we're gonna go ahead and run that over there this is the display port that feeds the Thunderbolt that's built into this motherboard so it runs to the inside of the case here there we go just go ahead and get that over there Nothing we can really do to make that cable management perfect, so we're just going to roll with it. Okay, and finally, uh, one more SATA power connector over here. And that's going to connect to the top panel where I've got some LED strips. See, you can see that uh, those connectors are right here. These are quite worn out. Um, I did say that I was planning to put RGB strips in this thing, but quite frankly, guys, I think I may have lost patience with this project at this point. I mean, I guess we could. Jake did send me over all these nice fancy RGB strips. It'd be a shame to not use them. What kind of controller did he send? Oh, this is just one of those uh, cable mod style ones. This actually might not be a ton of work. Okay, I'll consider it. Um, that's my Y spy, and I will use that later. Let's see, where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. 
So we could use this cable mod controller right here, or alternate plan. Oh yeah, there you go, there's the power for it. Uh, let me have a look at how... Oh wow, how long are the shorter ones? Oh yeah, that seems like that would be a better bet. Those long ones are too long. Or I could probably actually just plug these directly into the motherboard. These are RGB, but not addressable. Yeah, these are 12 volt RGB strips. You know what? What the hey? What the hey? Let's do it. Let's do it. These are magnetic. It's a super easy swap out. Uh, okay, I'll let you know. Uh, these are UV ones, and I'm going to swap them out for RGB. There we go. We got three of these. Let's just throw two on there. Womp. Um, actually, no, I don't care. <laughs> RGB is one of those things where if I'm doing it for like a, a show, a showpiece build, I'll do it. But for my own, I actually just cannot be arsed. I'm over it. <laughs> put that back there and put that back there. I would have to undo these cable ties, which would mean going and getting a pair of side cutters. All right, I'm out. I'm out. Completely out. <laughs> hopefully you guys aren't too, hopefully you guys aren't too disappointed. It's time to do a leak test. Oh boy. I am really hoping for the best here. I'm just like paranoid. Double check. Every fitting is tight. If it leaks, we all know to blame Rod. Okay. Oh boy. All right, fill time. Very nervous, but actually now's as good a time as any to sort of step back and take a look at the, the refinished build. Definitely a lot tidier. Uh, you know what, okay, one thing I can do is I can put a little bit of uh, at least a couple of cable ties in here. Shoot, where'd I put my cable ties? I had them before I started the stream because I used it to, ah, there it is. Okay, lttstore.com, suckers. People saying, pressure test, you dummy. It's not a matter of dumb or not dumb. It's a matter of I do not have a pressure testing tool here. So, yes, that would be better. Um, no, it is not an option today. All right, so let's just go ahead and give it the old tie tie right here. This is not my finest work by any stretch of the imagination. This is what we call in the biz, better than nothing. Okay. Here comes another better than nothing cable tie. There we go. All right. And I don't know, what do you say? Like maybe one more right uh, there. And we can hide away those RGB cables on the graphics card block that I am not plugging in. Haha. <laughs> yep. Use that to just kind of stick them under there. That'll do. Yep. OK. 
Table management purists will not be happy with this job, but I'm calling it fine enough. Hey, at least the uh, at least the tubing looks awesome, right? Right? Yeah, right. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. Got a great suggestion on float plane. Who's that from? Uh, Goo53. Just put a flammable gas in the loop and then light a match. Uh, no explosion means no leaks. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. I uh, use this. Where's my power cable? I think I hooked it up before we started. Oh, the kid bumped their head. Sounds like. That's rough. It's a hard life. Uh, where did I put that power cord? Dang it. Where is it? There it is. Oh, she is real unhappy. Uh, someone says, do not mount this above the UPS if it potentially leaks. Uh, yeah, that would be pretty bad, I guess. All right. It's go time, ladies and gentlemen. It's pour time. Where's my towel at? There it is. Oh. Well, one thing I was right about today, this did take so long that any water that I spilled at the beginning of this process has long since dried. We're gonna know real quick if those fittings are gonna work. Okay, it's enough for now. Hey, okay, there's water going into the tubes. Yeah, I can give you guys a look at that. Here we go. You can see there's water trickling down there. Let's see if there's any leakage so far. It's a little early, but um, yeah, so far nothing, I don't think. How's that one doing? Yeah, I don't see anything. Well, the shards of plastic for sure, but... Hey, thanks Joshua Long. All right. Whew. Stressed. Here we go. There's gonna be people giving me a hard time about tap water. I have always used tap water. I just say distilled because it makes some people feel better. I just put some, uh, some iodine or some PT mead in it and it's all good. Remember too though guys, that I'm coming at you from, um, you know, Vancouver, British Columbia where we actually have excellent tap water. There are plenty of places around the world where I would not use their tap water for water cooling just because there's too much uh, mineral content and like chlorine or whatever the case may be. Here it's relatively good. Yes, distilled would be better, but I'm, I, you know, it's just not at the point where I would stress out about it. All right, here we go. Apparently there's a ram stick that looks unclipped. No, it's not unclipped. The spacing is just a little bit wonky. Okay. Got a pretty good suggestion. Throw a fitting on the end and, uh, and blow. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea. I guess that's one way to find out if this thing is gonna explode. Uh, do I have any tubes that do not have a fitting on both ends? Yeah, no, okay, that's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and put that sucker on there. All right, kiddo, you wanna keep an eye out for any leaks? We're gonna do a quick pressure test here. Uh, not yet. I don't hear anything. <sighs> I 
It's looking good to me. Whew. All right. Rod Rosenberg. Done saved the day today, folks. And did not screw me over. Nice. Ah. Let's fill this thing up. I don't think it's going to leak at this point. Okay, we gotta fire this thing up. Let's see if that uh, power button works. Here we go. Think the power button works? Oh, it works. Glorious. Hold on, I gotta get you guys a look at this. Here we go. We move in water, folks. Okay, I think I emptied the res already. Yeah, just a little bit left in the bottom, so there might be some bubbles stuck in the pump. See, that's why you're seeing these bubbles not really moving here. So that's fine. All we need to do is uh, pop the webcam over here. Don't want you guys to miss it if something blows up. So we're gonna shut it down gracefully because my, my OS is on here. I don't like shutting it down um, abruptly if I don't have to. It's my daily driver. Uh, some of the bubbles came out. Oh wow, there's still a fair bit of space up at the top of the res. Okay, here we go. Some more. Wow, okay, that's two, almost two full water bottles. Do oh, you mind filling that up for me, little man? Thank you, sir. Oh, hello, power cycle. Hello. Let me try that again. Oh! Feeling good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I want to give it another power cycle first, though. All right, here we go. I turned it off and power cycling now. Hmm, you know, I think the real problem at this point might be that I've got my pump turned down. Uh-oh. How hard is that to get at? Might be pretty hard. Hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. I mean, it's, they're working their way through. Maybe we just need to give it a little shaky shake. Oh, camera froze. Dang it. All right, so we'll give that a unplug and replug. That's fine. Don't worry. We got a procedure for this now. And then give it a deactivate and a reactivate. Hey, we back? We back. All right, cool. There we go, guys. Sorry about that. So it's still not moving too fast. And unfortunately, I've got a cosmetic backing on this pump that might make it very difficult for me to get at the RPM adjustment thing. So let me just come around the other side and have a look here. Yeah, I think that is basically not happening. Oh, wait, 
So just the one side. You know what, it, this might work. So if I can get this little um, hex piece off here, I might be able to remove it. Where'd my fix it kit go? There we go. Okay, so you guys don't have a great view of this right now. There we go. Little hexy hex, there we go. Let's see if this plate just pops out for me. What do you think, little platey plate? You wanna just pop out? Just kinda, kinda pop, ooh, hello. Hello, little plate. Ooh, you're a nice little plate. Oh yeah, look at you go. Fantastic. Now, we can do one of my favorite little tricks, and we can, ah. Uh, Okay, first what we're gonna do is tilt the system a bit so I can actually see under here. Please tell me I used a Vario pump. I did. Good. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little red dial on the back of the pump there. I'm gonna jam this slot ahead screwdriver Should be good. All right. That's fine. You guys didn't miss much. I was just bleeding the loop. Can be a little bit tedious because you just got to kind of keep either cycling the power or cycling the, uh, the pump RPM until the bubbles work their way out. Do, 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 do. This is the kind of thing we would normally skip with movie magic, you know? Looking into the res, I think we've got enough of a height difference between the inlet and the outlet that it's not sucking back up the air bubbles that are going in, but um, it's just taken a while because there's a lot of space in this loop. Two thick triple rads, GPU block, CPU block, big old reservoir. I think we're getting close though. There's a bubble stuck up at the top of the motherboard block here. Or well, I guess it'll be the bottom in a normal orientation. But we're getting pretty close other than that. I think flattening the system out for a little bit will probably help us get rid of some of the ones that we've had trouble with so far. And giving it a shake too can help a lot with these things. Just to loosen bubbles that are stuck in places that are hard to get out of. You can see certain places like, you know, this area, there's a little vortex on this graphics card block here. So I cut the RPM, turn it up, turn it up, come on, crank it. See if we can get that to break up and move. You can see we got some of it. Yeah, there goes a little more. Turn it down. Okay, we're gonna go turn it up real slow like this time. Kind of mesmerizing, you know? I really like this one coming out of the coming out of the CPU block. So when it's cranked, you've got this kind of this weird tornado effect. Like a little air tornado there. And you turn it down and it breaks up and moves. And you go again, and whatever new air is stuck in the CPU block now forms it again. Yeah, I think if we flatten this out, we're gonna be pretty good real quick here. All right, alt, 
one. There we go. Uh, I'm going to leave that cap off, though. Oh, boy. And I'm going to top this up. Let's see. Yep. Put that way a little bit. Ooh. Oh, that's more than I meant to put in. There we go. That's, oh, no, I can go a little bit farther. So because this is going to be horizontal in the installed configuration, it's important for it to be as full as it can be. Oops. Oh, man. I overfilled it a little bit. Ah, uh, you know what? That's okay. I'll just absorb some of it. Let's soak it up. Uh, that's quite a bit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, a little bit of that's definitely dripping down. <laughs> that's okay. We can live with that. Okay. Stop fittings going in. One big question here is whether this system actually still works. It should. But you never know. All my kids are here eating now. They're all eating corn on the cob, and I am starving. You guys are killing me here. All right. Tighten that on. I'm going to close this up, because I think there's enough water in that even once we... Or there's enough water in there that even once I flatten it, and some of those air bubbles work out. We're going to be good. Um, okay, that's there. This is Mummy's I Fix It kit, so I need to make sure I don't lose any pieces. Okay. Oh, rip this camera. There we go. Ah, let's lower that down. There we go. Okay, now some more of those bubbles are working the way out. Oh, wow, you can see quite a lot of it. Uh, okay, well, that's good to know. Maybe we needed to shake it around some more. Oh, I forgot about this. It actually has a fill port here as well. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, that's great. So we might go ahead and put a little bit more water in once it's kind of shaking it sillies out this way as well. Okay, yep, giving it the old shaky shake. There's definitely still some, still some air bubbles in there. Oh yeah. Pump ran out of water. Got an air bubble stuck in it. Oh man. Okay, there's quite a bit more to work its way through here. Okay, well that's fine. That's fine, just fine. I will eat later. Oh yeah, man, dang, that's like at least another third of a cup. You know, 150 mils or so. Nailed the fill that time, though, so that's nice. Just a little bit of water on the lip around the outside. Ah, okay, there we go. This little Dremel wrench, it turns out, is perfect for tightening these top fittings on. Nice and curved so it doesn't scratch them. Okay, we're going down again. Swamp! Okay, that's a lot better. Just a little bit of air came free this time. Cool.
I'm sure you guys are missing the movie magic at this point. This really is how tedious a lot of these projects are. Most of these projects are. Actually, I found this one relatively fun. This was pretty enjoyable. It's nice when things work out. Actually, I shouldn't say this is how to, okay, no. Usually a lot more things than this go wrong. This has actually gone pretty smoothly. And it's bled. That's it. I'm gonna give it one more. I'm gonna give it one more lift up this way. Ah. Oh, never mind. Here come the bubbles again. All right, I take it back. That is a super weird way to eat corn on the cob. Okay. Well, you can eat corn however you want. It is a free country. Um, shoot. Where did I put that? Um, where did I put that little flathead I fix it bit? Uh, no, I had it still just a second ago. I was using it to turn the vario dial on the pump. That's fine, I can use this wrench. I just have to make sure I don't lose this wrench now because I have no backup. Okay, turn it down. Turn it up. Are we clear this time? Are we good, water cooling loop? Help me out here. Okay, I think so. I think that was the last bubble. Okay, can you eat the corn normally, please? Okay, off you go. I swear to you, I've never seen him eat corn like that before. We'll, we'll get that fixed. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up one more time, top it up, and then we are good. We can hook a monitor up and see if this thing is actually working or if it's just pretending to be working. I'm putting water in it to cool it. Yeah, neat, huh? She's like, whatever. <laughs> Very few cares given by that one about this. Okay. Okay. We are we are, done? we're there, yeah. We're done. It's completely full. Uh, now I can put this, this cover back on here. Uh, oh, I didn't say you were gonna be allowed to help with a power tool. I said you're gonna be allowed to help with something. No power tools, kiddo. Um, I take it back. No power tools. I'm out. I'm out. Consider this your first broken promise from your father. Uh, hey, darling, you can't be playing that right now. Yeah, I don't know how to turn it off either. If I did, it would never turn on again. 
Okay. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and hook it up to something. Where's an HDMI cable? Uh, where's my other cam link? Okay, here we go. Um, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way, darling. Okay, here we go. Here's a. Okay, I just need to make sure that I'm not unplugging an HDMI connection that I need. There we go. Let's try this one. And let's plug this in. I actually have no idea if this capture card is going to work either because I have not tried it earlier on the stream. Oh. There we go. Let's try adding it. Oh, okay. Woo. Adding video capture device. Big shout out to Corsair for sending me another cam link. Um, super handy device. They sent over the one for the stream PC upgrade. And shoot, I did not have this plugged in before I launched OBS, so that is not going to work. Hmm. What's the easiest way to deal with this? Well, okay. One other option is to just hold up a monitor. This table is pretty covered in stuff at this. Ow. Okay, we're just going to go the hold up the monitor route to confirm that it's working. And once we do, I have some cleanup to do here. Oh, okay. Come on. Are you going to work? You don't got to go to work. Work, work. But you please, please, please got to work. Okay. Um, there we go. Yep, we're calling that good enough. All right. HDMI in. To our test monitor. Is this thing even powered on? I'm not sure. I think I plugged it in earlier, though, so theoretically it should turn on. Not... Uh, oh, that's a remote. You need to leave it exactly where it was. I had it in exactly the place where I wanted it to be. Thanks, darling. Is this on? It does seem to be on. Um, um, HDMI. Okay, no, my darling. You can't be stealing my spot right now. Not right now. Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> It's been a very, very long and tiring stream. Oh, I forgot to do one thing today. Shoot. Hey, it's working. Rock on. Okay, we're calling it done. Uh, there's one thing I forgot to fix though. My front USB. Uh, this always triggers me. The, the tab is on the top instead of on the bottom. So you plug it in upside down. I, all I had to do was take them and switch them out and put them back in, uh, but I did not do that and now it is too late and I will never ever ever do it. That'll be the one idiosyncrasy that's left in this machine. Off you go. Okay, I'm done. Guys, thank you for tuning in to this marathon nearly six hour PC building stream. Um, that's it. That's all I have to say. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. It's hard line tubed. Actually, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can get, uh, we can get a, a better look at it on the main camera here. Let me just pop this off the tripod. All right. <clears throat> We're going to hand cam it. We're going to hand cam it. Love you too, baby girl. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, I just got to get it away from the feet of the tripod. There we are. Okay. So now we can have a look at the hard lineness of it. Get it? It's my rig, so it's the hard lineness. E got him. 
Check that out. Parallel AF. Okay. Look at that. Oh, yes. Okay, you know what? One small, that's probably drooping just a little bit. There we go. Right now, sweetie. You know what that is anyway. Don't ask me questions. You know the answer to. You know that that bothers me. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Get that manual focus. So we got that one. This one's also parfait. I really cannot believe how well that ended up lining up. I'm super pleased with it. Just like that. This one too. Super happy with this run. Nice and level with the top of the case. You can really see that. Nice and flat. 90 degree bend. That's the one that does have the kink in it there. So you can see that from the bottom, but honestly from the top, it's really not as bad. It's definitely nowhere near as good as this one though. This one is flipping sick. Like that is, that is a good bend. You can definitely tell that that tubing is not the same color though. <laughs> Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, this one lined up really well for me. There it is. Finished build. I'm gonna throw this back on the tripod. Oh yeah, I guess I haven't really like even talked about the hardware I'm running that much. So I've got a 3900X. It's like, you know, it's the CPU that's like overkill but not compensating, you know? So 3900X and the X570 Aqua, the motherboard for if you're super duper compensating and you're proud of it. Um, RTX Titan graphics card for if you're compensating or like a data scientist. So definitely just compensation here. Gigabyte uh, RGB, one terabyte SSD. That's sensible compared to the one that I was thinking of putting in today. This stupid thing, eight terabyte Eight terabyte SSD. Might do a separate video. Might do a separate video about that. Uh, what else do I got going on here? Still running my AX 1500i power supply. I mean, there's no reason to change it out at this point. Got a couple of EK. These are their Coolstream SE, or excuse me, XE, thick boy, triple 120 millimeter radiators. Got Noctua NFF 12s, of course. Dude, there's, these are the old LTT edition one. Um, Lang D5 pump. I actually forget who makes this super cool reservoir. I doubt that you can still get it. It's kind of a boutique item at the time. Uh, using, I think it's Bits Power. I want to say Bits Power tubing. Hold on, I'm going to double check that. Oh. Bits Power. Honestly, this tubing, uh, not great, but part of the reason that it's bad could have been that it was sitting in storage for a day and a half, so to speak. Sitting in storage for a real long time. Uh, old Corsair Dominators, I gotta upgrade those. Those are 2666 Dominator Platinums. Um, not optimal for the 3900X. I will get around to that at some point. It didn't happen today. There you go. Personal rig update. 2015 is now updated. Uh, let's just pop that back on the tripod. Okay, and I think my kids would probably like some attention because I have been fairly tuned out all day here. Oh, I should definitely See if there's any critical super chats for me to get to. Uh, greetings from 7 a.m. time zone. Nice quarantine beard says Alexi. Thank you. Uh, C Snatcher says, would you consider having Alex build you a custom distro plate for your build? Ha, huh. no, I don't think I'm gonna touch this build for a little while. Uh, 
Geppel YT says, mid conversion from a 10 core Vega 64 iMac Pro to my first PC build for work in gaming. Been really binging episodes lately. Thanks for the hard work. Hey, you too. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm out.